In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Let's rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kate was standing. Yes, she was. I am. <laughs> Good. Um, so, what brings us back here this evening is the uh, talk that's been ongoing for a few years now. But I think we're getting to the bitter end, God willing. So tonight we're here. The first subject is to talk about the MWRA and over water update and vote on potentially some uh, steps, what we want to go for, how we want to go forward. So I'd like to turn it over to the town administrator and to Bob and Steve to uh, sort of take, o take over the subject matter and from this point forward. I'll start it off, uh, uh, first of all, to give him a chance to sit down and gather his, well, actually reorganize his paperwork. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, as you pointed out, Mr. Chairman, you know, this has been, uh, we're at a, a culmination of a uh, year's worth of negotiations with the town of Andover for a, a potentially a long-term um, contract for potable water uh, for 99 years. Uh, up until 10.30 last night, um, Mr. Masseri and town administrator, town council, Mark, Rob, were up in the town of Andover still negotiating some of the terms and conditions uh, that we are going to be presenting this evening, uh, this evening uh, to the board, our colleagues here on the board. Um, and up until through today, up until just a short while ago, uh, th there is one more little change uh, than what's been forwarded uh, to the board for their consideration that was forwarded this afternoon. But uh, really what's going to be put forth for our consideration tonight is we have come to an agreement with Andover. And the agreement is both a long, a short term and long term. I say short term and long term. Uh, because uh, if we agree to the terms and conditions, and they agree to the terms and conditions, and again, they're meeting this evening to um, in a public forum, a public meeting, uh, to go over the terms and conditions as we are, uh, they may potentially even vote this evening. Uh, they, if they don't vote this evening, they would ask us to allow them till Monday afternoon to vote, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, what it would provide for is uh, the terms and conditions of this agreement that's going to be presented this evening to go into effect effective Monday. And then it would all just be subject to the special legislation passing. So basically what you see here is what we get for the next 99 years starting before the special legislation is enacted and uh, formalized with the governor's signature. It also provides for if something falls apart here, if the special legislation doesn't, uh, doesn't go through for whatever reason, or either party doesn't ratify uh, with the special legislation having been enacted, um, we basically go back to the terms and conditions of the intermunicipal agreement, which was extended mutually uh, last fall by both boards. So we, we have all the bases and then some. I mean, there are more bases on this than there are on a baseball field. But we've got all the bases covered as to, you know, the what ifs. And you, you'll see that in the side letter uh, agreement that, we've, uh, that we're going to be putting forth. Uh, so it's been a, it's been a, a, a long process, uh, starting with, you know, Andover coming back into play after um, telling us four or five years ago that they couldn't or wouldn't supply us with the water and then last January notifying us that, oh, sure we can. So again, uh, I think to our credit and to their credit, you know, we have taken the time to uh, analyze uh, their ability to service our needs in total for the long term and um, economically, you know, it appears to make sense. But, you know, if this is what we want to do, um, we have an opportunity to do so. 
So uh, we hope that after uh, all of our deliberations and negotiations with Andover that you find the agreement to be acceptable. Um, if not, we're here to listen, obviously. We have tentatively set up a meeting for tomorrow afternoon with Andover again for one last negotiation session. If there's something that comes up at our meeting tonight, you know, that we may have overlooked, hard to believe, but, you know, a new set of eyes and, 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 the, and this is a good thing. And the same thing up there, if there's something that comes up of substance uh, that requires a substantive change uh, that this board collectively wants to see or they want to see, uh, we'll have an opportunity tomorrow afternoon to just address it and then vote on it fi for a final vote on Monday, unless we like it. If we like it, we can vote tonight. Uh, I understand Mr. Schultz isn't here. I haven't even seen what uh, you're no, 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 that's are fine. Are we going to get a copy of it so that we can actually look at what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, so, and, and, but I wouldn't suggest that we do. I think all five members should be here when we vote on a matter of this uh, substance, well, obviously. Well, as we talk about it, I think it's important for me to have a copy of it. I believe you'll have a copy. It was, in your, it was in your meeting packet. I know you don't have your iPad with you, so. I, I don't have a meeting packet, so. And I don't carry my, my iPad around with me as I work during the day. So it, okay. if it was just put in there an hour or two or three ago, I really haven't yeah. had a chance to look at it, so. Yeah, what, uh, but the purpose of tonight is to go through it. Definitely. So I'd like a paper copy so we can go yeah. through it. You're good. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> okay. Continue, please. Uh, well, I'm all set. I'll turn it over to the town administrator. Uh, I think um, to, to, the, to the point being made relative to the, the timing, um, we reached an agreement on language at uh, about 625 this evening uh, in terms of the discussion. So thus the reason that a final draft is being presented here, and uh, it is correct that there was a meeting packet assembled at about 3 o'clock this afternoon and put in the drop box. Again, that was the uh, earliest opportunity that a, a draft that reflected agreeable business terms would be available. Um, there's been probably dozens of drafts of this IMA that have gone back and forth between the communities over the past three weeks, uh, none of which reflected agreement between the two communities. Um, I've asked the town council as well as our consultant uh, Rob um, Williamson from um, Wright Pierce to join us this evening. Um, my thought was we could, we could approach it in a couple of ways. We could uh, go through the IMA and review it section by section, uh, which Attorney Corbo I believe is prepared to do this evening. Uh, we could also um, give uh, more of a summary of it and ask the board, give the board members the opportunity to review it between now and uh, a later point that the board may determine. It's really the pleasure of the board, but we're prepared to do either. And um, I, I would say to you that we are equally frustrated by the timing uh, with regard to this, but um, we are at a point where we believe that the, the, the agreement that we're, would work for both negotiating teams has been reduced to writing and is now in front of us. So do you, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like us to go section by so section, we will if we want to. So my expectation for tonight's meeting is this. You know, I understand the frustration. I can hear the frustration in Mrs. Minion Pelly's voice, and you can understand why. Um, but that's no reflection upon Bob or your Steve and Greg and Rob and uh, Mark and Michael yourself, all your work. We know you are, you know, you try to push this as long as you fast you can, but I think tonight's meeting is important if we can go through it. And I think the how I would suggest you go about it is. We've seen a lot of this. Try to focus in on the areas that you've, you guys spent the most time on, that have had the most change. And then it'll allow us the opportunity after tonight to go back and read everything else in detail. And then we get together on Monday, we can make it to final decision. And uh, is that okay with you, Mrs. Minifel? Sure, yeah. And the other thing that I think we need to do, is I believe we made a commitment that May 30th was going to be our date of yeah. decision making. 31st, 31st, but correct. And I think yes. this board needs to take an action if we're, before we walk out this door that we're going to extend that to June 4th. Um, so I don't. I want to make sure we capture that in our actions tonight. Okay. Sure. So um, with that said, I know the folks at home are going to be seeing it. The folks in the audience, and, you know, we don't have extra hard copies, but hopefully the screen is acceptable to you. In Michael, what I have in my meeting packet online is not 
up to date? So there, there are two documents in your folder for the meeting of May 30th, 2018. There's a packet, the traditional packet, and then the document that reflects the 625 p.m. agreement, which is actually entitled Untitled. Oh, okay. So that is the document. That, was. that is the document that Ms. Manipelli has in her hand uh, right now, as well as a document that Mr. Corbo is going yeah. to be reviewing this, this evening. This isn't your only copy, right? Because uh, that copy. it was, but Mr. Clark has made more oh. copies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you, Mr. Clark. What I'd like to do is at the end of the meeting before we. Uh, close the meeting I have a, a just a statement from Mr. Schultz that he'd like me to read based on his quick review of the one that you you had put in our Dropbox at 3 o'clock and based on what I believe he has to say probably won't change based on some of the changes you have made yeah the, the oh. changes since 3 o'clock are not consequential okay and, and Mr. Corbo can you identify when we get to that section if that's okay yes. thank you I'm going to turn it over to you Thank you. Um, thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Good evening. My name is Greg Corbo uh, from Town Council's office. I have been um, working with um, your negotiating team um, to try to come to a, a final 99-year agreement with the town of Andover. And, um, you know, that, thanks to the work of, of the negotiating team on really on both sides, you know, we, we think we, we have an agreement that um, – can, can allow the parties to move forward and, you know, get this 99-year um, agreement um, off the ground. And so just to sort of um, give you an understanding of, you know, wh where we've been with this, um, you know, we started off with, you know, essentially what you have in front of you is a, is a markup of the, the previous agreement um, that, that's already been in effect for, for many years informed by the summary of terms that were agreed to last August, okay? And um, generally speaking, our, our discussions focused in on two major areas. You know, the first are, wh what are the, the essential business terms of a 99-year agreement that might be different from the previous shorter-term agreement? And, you know, what are the mechanics of um, bridging the gap between the end of the existing agreement and the beginning of the long-term agreement. And it was really that part of the discussion um, that I think caused the most um, discussion and, and negotiation amongst the negotiating teams was, was how we bridge from one agreement to the other. And, you know, the, the issue really was focused on the fact that um, when we decided to go down this road of negotiating a 99-year agreement, I, I think everybody was operating under the assumption that the legislature would have already acted to give us permission to, to enter into an agreement for a 99-year term, right? So I think everybody understands that the way the law is written now, the maximum term for an intermunicipal agreement is 25 years. Um, both town meetings authorized um, you to seek legislation to extend that to 99 years. And I think everybody thought that that would be in place by the time we got to this point. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, so we, we had to spend a lot of time on how do we craft an agreement that is durable enough to allow North Reading to move forward and not go with the MWRA, but to go with Andover, but at the same time to give the parties sufficient protections so that if the legislature doesn't act in a timely manner, there is still um, a way to um, get out of the agreement because I think it was recognized that nobody wanted another short-term agreement, that it was either going to be a, a long-term 99-year agreement or nothing. Um, so we spent a lot of time on, you know, how do we get from point A to point B? And, and I think that it was sort of complicated by the fact that um, I, as your town council, did not see eye to eye with Andover's town council as to what the effect of the legislation would be if, if passed. Um, and so, you know, they, they started out from a position of um, there couldn't be any agreement put into effect until the legislation was signed into law. And we started out from the position of 
no, the agreement can, can be fully effective um, and then um, the term would be extended to 99 years once the legislation is signed. And what we sort of ended up with was um, a, a compromise position where we have an agreement um, that goes into effect the moment that it's signed, which we believe is going to be on, on June 4th at this point. Um, but it's an agreement that automatically terminates um, if the legislation is not passed or is not passed in the form that was petitioned. And to give Andover a little further comfort, there's a requirement in there that the agreement be ratified after the special legislation is put into effect. And in order to protect North Reading's interests, there are um, incentives or, or penalties if either side decides not to ratify. Yes? So just in the wild and unlikely chance that it doesn't get approved as a 99 year by the legislature, what do we revert back to what we currently have as our MOU? That, that's correct. So what, what we've agreed to, and um, this is mostly dealt with in um, what we're referring to as the side agreement. Oh, um, okay. And is, is that part of what you passed out? That is in the meeting packet itself, and that remains yeah, unchanged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we, we, we can, we can pro provide a paper copy if that would be yeah. easier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so what the, um, the, the so-called side agreement provides is that if, um, so there are basically, I guess, four contingencies that, that could arise that would result in this new agreement being terminated. The first contingency is that the legislature does not pass our requested legislation. Mm -hmm. The second contingency is that the legislature passes a special act, but it's somehow different than the, the legislation that we submitted. The third contingency is that the legislature passes the act in the form that we approved, but Andover chooses not to give the second signature for some reason. The fourth contingency would be the legislation passes in the form we approved, but North Reading for some reason chooses not to um, give sign the second time. So under any of those scenarios, we would revert back to the currently existing agreement with the rates and the increases that are currently in effect but that agreement would be extended for one additional year at North Reading's option. Okay. Um, if, that, if one of those contingencies arises through no fault of the parties, meaning the legislation doesn't pass or the legislation passes in a different form, then there are no penalties on either side. Okay. If um, the, agreement, the new agreement terminates because Andover refuses to sign, then they incur a penalty by giving North Reading um, an additional credit that wouldn't have been due under the existing agreement. And if North Reading chooses not to sign the second time, then North Reading gives up um, a, um, a credit that it's due under the existing agreement. Okay? So, you know. Everyone on the negotiating team is, is hopeful and, and confident that the legislation is going to pass and that this is going to automatically become a 99-year agreement. But it was very important to both sides that these contingencies be addressed and that um, there be sort of full faith and confidence that when you sign this agreement now on June 4th, that, that that everybody is agreeing to be bound and everybody has the intent of moving forward with the 99 years. What we didn't want to have was an agreement signed on June 4th or another letter of intent or agreement to agree signed on June 4th, then the legislation pass a month or two from now, and then the parties have to be back at the table you know, negotiating again. It was very important to your negotiating team that we not be put in that position. And, and we're, we're confident now that we have an agreement <coughs> that prevents that from happening. That it's either go, going to automatically take effect or it's not. 
And if it doesn't take effect because somebody has changed their minds, then they incur penalties as a result. So are there, are there any questions about that aspect of it before we, we move on? So, yes, but, so but that they didn't sign that yet, too? It's Was that tonight. just what came up recently? They, they'll be voting on it. They'll be talking about it tonight as we are. Okay. But they're in agreement. But their negotiating team, which is two members of their board, are in agreement. And they actually had a third member show up in the absence of another one who reiterated his support for what was going forward. Okay. But they're slated to, no matter what, June 4th. If they don't do it tonight, they're going to They don't do it tonight. They have a meeting scheduled for 4 p.m. June 4th, prior to our town meeting. Okay. okay. And, um, Mike, do you want to address the, the issue of um, how we would proceed if the agreement is not signed on June 4th? So, <clears throat> I think that I think that that, that the, if, you're, if you're referring to how to handle actions at town meeting, uh, um, I'll speak to that. So, looking at this, um, the risk level, I mean, honestly, is high for both communities, but I, I believe that it's higher for North Reading because of the um, the the desire and the need to address our water supply for the long term as soon as possible, um, and it. It's further um, escalated by the fact that we have delayed our timeline from last year so that uh, construction that was due to be um, underway and complete a year from now um, has been delayed. And we did that knowingly so that we could pursue this, uh, this alternative. Um, we've addressed contingencies and we, I, I think that we are all confident that not only have we addressed the contingencies but that the good faith effort is there to not only approve the agreements now or on June 4th, but also upon the um, enactment by uh, the legislature and the governor, whenever that may be, uh, hopefully in the next um, few weeks, or the early part of the summer. Um, again, that's something that's not within our control, but we're confident that it's going to proceed. Um, for us, what that means is uh, we have a town meeting where we were seeking author authorization for funding for uh, one or the other project. That was our intention um, going back to when we mapped out this timeline at the September and October meetings that we had, including the October town meeting last year. Um, w while we have, we have, we have confidence um, and um, we have a, a certain level of certainty, um, it's not done. And it won't be done, it can't be done until the legislature acts. Did you have a question? I, yeah, I just want to, I want to say it a little simpler than you, yeah. the way you did. I think you were trying to sugarcoat it, but the, to the start of this little story, the bottom line is, Michael, they have a water source. They have a water source for their community. We don't. That's the difference sure. in this whole thing. And that, and I know, Steve and Bob you, and, and Greg, you did the best you could to articulate this to them, but I don't believe them as a negotiating team and them as a community have really grasped the fact that the reason why we're trying to dig in and trying to get this done sooner than later is because we need it. We don't have another water source. We, we have an option for one, but they are our current water source, and they have it. So if we go away or this whole thing crumbles and, it, and, it, and it's an epic failure, there is no impact on the community. It's an epic impact on this community. And I hope this has been addressed to them and stated to them emphatically so they get it. You know, there's a lot of emotion on this end of the negotiating table, and there's a reason why. We need this to survive. They already have it. So I just wanted to say it a little more clearer than you did and make it a little simpler for the folks listening at home because you did a nice job the way you, you presented it, but that's the bottom line. So I apologize, yeah. but I had to get that yeah, off my I chest. don't disagree with you, and I think we made that point clear over the 14 months of discussions yeah, with them. Over and over, over, uh, and over and over and over. I, I would over say this. The bottom line is because of that urgency, we need to have in hand authorization to go down one path or the other yes. after June 4th Absolutely. town meeting. So and what I hope that they mean, can respect that situation. I, they understand it. I, I think that they. Well, I, th I should say this. We've told them that we're going to have to come up with a contingency based on the timeline that we're working with right now. So what that means for us is that, uh, and, and I, I can't say that we've identified exactly the mechanism that it would happen, but within the confines of the three articles that we have pending, mm -hmm. we intend to recommend the board ask town meeting to appropriate $3 million for an interconnection for a long-term potable water supply without designating it 
for the MWRA and without designating it for Andover. And what that will do is give us the insurance that we believe we need to either construct the interconnection and make the, I should say, make the improvements in the existing interconnection with Andover or account for any cost overruns that might be um, associated with the MWRA project given the delay in timing and the escalation in cost. Um, we'd have an opportunity to address, so, so uh, I, I guess, uh, straighten out what the appropriations need to look like in the long term once the legislation is enacted. But until that takes place, I really feel strongly that we need to have that option available to us so that in the event this falls apart, we're not waiting until October to try to reinitiate another alternative, the MWRA. So my impression was um, that that we're voting this up or down before town meeting so that we have the direction to go to with people that vote at town meeting, not <coughs> waiting again on whether or not they're going to do it or not or sign it or not. Am I misunderstanding that? Because it's very clear from this team that, that they've set deadlines and told them deadlines and we've extended deadlines and we're done now. We're either going to vote it up or down and move on with what we put on as warrant articles, not waiting on them or making another backup plan because they haven't signed or voted on it. Let Mr. O'Leary. Uh, the open issue also. is the legislature probably will not have passed the 99-year agreement by the time we get to town meeting. No, actually, we can guarantee you it will not be enacted yeah. by no, June 4th, no, by, no, by Monday, by next Monday. So that, that's what the big, that's what that's the big what catch is. The so the contingency yeah. for us, again, okay. is to appropriate the money, you know, the $3 million, which allows us the opportunity to go one way or the other. If the deal falls through because of the special legislation or someone doesn't sign or whatever the contingencies are here in the uh, side agreement, uh, we can still move forward. So that's what we're going to put in our back pocket. Uh, we will present to town meeting, you know, basically we have an agreement with Andover, if this is what comes to fruition, or we do not. If we do not, we're going to present to town meeting, unfortunately, fell apart, we're going with MWRA, and we need $3 million to, to yeah. cover the cost. Okay. Or just, we need $3 million either way. So we're going to have that appropriation there, and we'll be able to move forward without having to have a special town meeting or wait until October. Okay. Yeah. So just to make sure people at home are uh, can understand this fully too, is when you say that a contingency based on legislation, it's not because the legislation has any issue with what we're trying to do. Correct. It's just a where it is and that they're scheduled to get to it. That's this correct. This is just a scheduling issue, not a technical issue associated with what we're trying to get accomplished. I just correct. want to make sure that's clear to some people in the community because the word's been a little out there and I think it's getting a little foggy on why legislation is taking so long. It's well, just because. Well, again, the legislation, legislation took so long because Andover was unable to um, get a, a vote at their town meeting in January, which is what it was scheduled. Of course, they, they originally had promised to have a special town meeting in November or December, mm -hmm. which would have resolved the issue up there as to whether we wanted to move forward or not, and would have had ample opportunity and time, in my estimation, the legislation would have already taken place. Um, the January town meeting that they had, again, didn't deliver the goods uh, that was satisfactory to North Reading. Uh, we provided them with an additional opportunity. It took them to the first week of April. All of a sudden, you know, it's an election year. They prorogued the end of July. It's a home rule petition along with 351 other cities and towns which have spring town meetings and uh, council meetings and initiatives that they put forth. Uh, so the calendar gets pretty, pretty crowded. And uh, unfortunately, we're in the situation we are. And you know, when we articulated to Andover through no fault of us. I mean, we did it in October, um, which was ample time and opportunity to, to get the legislation enacted and done. Um, so they recognize that, understand that. Again, I think in the side agreement, uh, that is a reflection of their understanding that an additional year may be needed if we're going to have an exit strategy. So um, unfortunately, the legislative calendar is working against us uh, in relation to our signing the agreement and enacting the whole thing. But we do need to hedge our bets and uh, have an opportunity to have appropriations ready to move forward in whatever direction. Mr. Gilberto. May I clarify one fact? So the $3 million, when we talk about it in the context of 
the Andover interconnection. It was a number that was identified when we did the comparison back in September of 2017. Mm -hmm. And that continues to be the working number, and it's mostly tied to the um, uh, booster treatment at the town line for water, if I understand correctly. Uh, we believe the capital improvements in North Reading in terms of the pipes themselves um, uh, would not be of the significance of the MWRA interconnection we looked at based on modeling we did late last year. Um, we don't believe that there's a, a, an escalation in cost in the MWRA alternative of $3 million. We believe it will be less than that, I think, based on the construction numbers. And that's not tied to any change with coming out of the MWRA, meaning no change in their buy-in cost. None of it is attributable to the MWRA. It's entirely construction related and related to the cost to hire contractors to build both the pump station and the pipes in the ground. It has nothing to do with the MWRA itself. Uh, their, uh, their proposal, to our knowledge, has not changed. Okay. Uh, I think it's also important to understand that if we continue down the path of Andover, the money that was appropriated last year, come October town meeting or something like that, will be those articles will be rescinded because we won't need the money. And if we do need, if we if the Andover agreement doesn't go, the money is available to take care of the. MWRA project, and none of that money will be spent in the real short term. So we should have the legislative agreement, one way or another, and a final go ahead for one or the other prior to spending any more money. But again, this this, pro you know, this proposal that's that's before you tonight uh, basically does draw uh, a line in the calendar. You know, August fifteenth. To August 31st, right around there, and we're going to move forward in one direction or another. So, uh, at that point, because by that point, the legislature will have taken some action or not, uh, favorable or not, and uh, we're going to move on. Mr. Govaro? Another note that I, I think many at home are probably wondering we were the beneficiary of a $3 million uh, infrastructure grant awarded to the town in March of this year and it was awarded for a potable water supply and an interconnection for a long-term supply. Um, and the grant award as presented to us is uh, for either alternative. So um, that is an offset to our potential cost projections. And I, I'm, I'm cautiously saying that, not to say that we may not have to incur any capital costs because we don't know that yet, but that is a potential offset that would be available to us in either of the scenarios described this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mrs. Minipelli, do you have anything else? I just, are we going to go, there's a couple of, I've had a couple of just substantive questions and maybe just for viewers at home or people. I just wanted to go through substantively, especially the, the drawer, how many uh, million gallons per day were permitted and when and the permitting obligations and also the, um, there's a sewer, sewer component, the schedule that was, if it, what the schedule is in terms of um, ushering in sewer and things like that. So I just really, if we could maybe talk s substantively about a few of these terms and conditions, that would be great. So you're talking about the general provisions on uh, in section two? I, yeah. Why, I mean why, that, why don't we just run through, because some be of them great. are pretty, yeah. pretty routine. Why don't yeah. we just run through the uh, proposed agreement uh, so that the general public could be aware as to what the terms so and conditions are. Are we presenting then, anything? If not, can we get the lights on? Yeah. Uh, we, really we can put the document up there, but that's all we have to put up, so I don't think it's worthwhile. No, not worthwhile. Yeah. And, I, and I think at the appropriate points, we discuss it. Ask, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Please, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I will, um, what I'll do is I'll take us through each page of the agreement and then, you know, give a brief description of what I think is significant on the page, and then, of course, if there are questions, um, either myself or um, Mark or Rob or Mike can, can answer those, those questions for you. Okay. okay. Um, so, you know, let's just kick it off on, on page one. Um, this agreement is entered into as of the 30th day of May 2018. Um, this was the, the deadline that was, that was set by this board. Um, and you know we believe that at this point we have a an agreement that's that's close to being final pending your approval. Um, I think that that this will likely be changed if you approve it tonight to June fourth. Right. Um, 
uh, otherwise, there's this page contains just some background information of, of why we're entering into this agreement and a couple of, of initial definitions. Um, I, I think the first um, significant issue um, comes up on page two um, with the definition of tier one water rate. Okay? This was an essential feature of the summary of terms from, from last August. And what this establishes is that this, this term tier one water rate is going to mean um, the lowest rate charged to any class of Andover customers. So no matter what Andover does to its rate structure in the future, no matter what it may call its various levels of rates, um, this is going to establish that North Reading's rate is always going to be based on the lowest rate in effect in the town of Andover. And that's what we refer to as the tier one water rate. And how about the flat rate? Because it's saying if it moves to a flat rate, and that means that they eliminate any tiers amongst what all their rate payers, and they mm -hmm. charge every rate payer the same amount. That's per right. Cubic and it per says based on the tier one rate. That's right. So that would that would still fall within the definition of this tier one rate. And so yeah. the idea here is that we will always be treated at the lowest rate that's in effect in Andover. So if they only have one rate, then that's the rate that our bills are going to be based on. Okay, so 95% of that rate, 95% so of that's that. That's right, rate. 95% of that rate, subject to certain escalation um, that, we'll, that we'll see later in the agree agreement. But the baseline is always going to be that lowest rate that's in effect in Andover, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then on page three, we get into um, the consumption quantities. And this is the um, amount of water that Andover is, is obligated to provide to North Reading. And it's, it's phrased in a way of um, Andover being required to provide North Reading with up to certain maximum volumes that increase over time with the idea that um, North Reading is not obligated to purchase a certain amount of water at any time, but that rather um, they are required to make available to us enough water to meet our demand. Um, so what you'll see here is that it's, it's phrased in Andover providing us up to certain volume thresholds, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Clark maybe to explain um, what those thresholds are, what they're based on, and, and how, how those thresholds will be met over time. So a lot of permitting we look at, there's, there's two, basically two different uh, volume standards that are met. It's either a maximum day demand or it's an average day demand over the course of the year. So an average would be your total water use divided by 365 days would give you your average daily demand. Your max day is that hot day in the summer. It's the absolute peak that you're going to draw during that year. Currently in the last two or three years, we've been between about 2.3 and 2.4 million gallons per day on that peak day. So if you look, the first uh, increment that Andover shall furnish is up to a maximum daily withdrawal of 2.4 million gallons per day. And that lasts for just the first couple years of the contract. Um, after that, it from June 30th, 2019, it steps up to 2.6 million gallons per day. And then after a date of June 30th, 2025, it steps up to a maximum of 3.0 MGD, or million gallons per day. So we're looking at, uh, you know, as North Reading continues to grow, we see the Pulte project coming online, some other small, smaller projects. And then kind of the bigger jump, the 2.6 to the 3 million gallon, we're anticipating that if we ever do have sewer in the section of North Reading, that will also drive up our, uh, not only our average daily demands, but it'll drive up our maximum daily demands too. So we're trying to account, account for all the possibilities going forward. Can I just ask? Yes, please. So I notice here, and I think it sort of mirrors what we had originally for summary, but it's saying obviously that those are subject to permitting, which we knew and you actually already explained to us, but there's no um, timeline there. So we obviously, even if we don't, we're not drawing three million as, as of 2025, we want the permitting in place by that point. So what are we doing to 
effectuate that because there's no real obligation. It's just saying subject to them getting it. So when, what's our plan to make that happen by those deadlines? So where we've been for the last uh, year or so is basically in kind of a permitting where we're revving our engine, but we're not going anywhere. We're in neutral no. because <laughs> we've had we've had to make come to this point where we make a final decision, and all the regulators we've talked to have said. Either path is a viable path. You have to make a decision which path you're going to go down. We can't file and say, we're going to go one of these two Change paths. We have idea. to tell them which path we're going to go down. So the direction to, to uh, right Pierce is going to be, once, once this agreement is in place, is to move forward as quickly as we have, as we can, to effectuate the permitting process. So what, basically what triggered this, if you remember back in 2016, we submitted to DEP a draft environmental impact report. Mm -hmm. One of the commentary, one of the commenters on that was the town of Andover saying, wait a minute, we can provide 100% of the water to you. And that's kind of what kicked off this discussion. We, we have to answer all the comments made in the draft environmental impact re report in what becomes our final environmental impact report. And that's kind of going to be the major effort going forward um, once this w agreement takes place. I'd kick it over to, to Rob to maybe describe the, uh, the I, timeline. Yeah, I was just going to say, and Greg's going to be talking about this later, there's actually discussion about the permitting process oh, okay, in good. here, later good. in here, okay. about how we yeah. think it'll unfold. Which touches the timelines. Great. So okay. Greg will be getting to that. And one, just one last point. One, we've talked about the contingencies based on the legislation. The other contingency we tried to factor into this is what if what if the other third parties don't agree? So there's we need an interbasin transfer act permit which is out of our hands, they're eventually going to need a, an increase in their Water Management Act permit volume. And again, that's a third party permit. So the document's kind of complicated because there's a lot of different contingencies we were trying to account for. And you'll see also the dates that discuss permitting seem like they're coming up pretty fast. And the reason that is is because the terms and these were from the terms and conditions which were established quite a while ago right. and we would have already expected to be in a position to to be moving these ahead so can i just so for mwra too we still have that um interbasin water transfer act permitting requirement too correct correct so we currently have an interbasin transfer act permit if we all recall for um, up to a million and a half gallons a day from the merrimack basin and into the yeah. switch river basin so we need to modify that permit to increase it to the volumes in, in the agreement. Yeah. If we go with the MWRA, we have no interbasin transfer, we'd have to start from square one, and we need an interbasin transfer permit, the similar one, for the total volume, which we're going to take from the MWRA. So either oh, okay. way we go, that we need an interbasin transfer. We're required permit. to have it. Yeah. Correct. Um, there, there are a whole host of other permits that are going to be required too if we go MWRA, yeah, you know, yeah. to get through the town of Andover, the river crossing, conservation, special legislation. So there's a few other right. hurdles to go right. that way. Yeah, ready. So, but but ready. that's where we were yeah. headed anyway. So we, we're aware of them. Uh, we haven't moved forward on them uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, primarily, Ready asked us to hold off until we made a decision. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that would be where we would progress from here. And again, that's timeline wise. A ways out, you know. That's 18 months or more, which is why the additional year Helps. is critical and helpful. Okay. And, and in addition, um, just so you know, so the initial permitting that we go through, if we go through Andover, we're going to be applying for the 2.6 because, as of today, that's what we can justify where we think North Reading will be 20, 20 years from now. That's what you apply for, where you mm -hmm. think you're going to be some time out. Um, it came up in the discussions actually last night. They asked, uh, Andover asked if we can pursue trying to obtain a permit for the three million gallons a day now. Uh, Mark and I don't think so. We haven't had a chance to talk to the regulators about that, and, and um, we don't think they can do that, that you can do that because you have to be able to justify the need. And without the sewer system, we can't justify that need. But. That's something as part of the permitting process we're going to look at. Okay. Anything else in this project? Thank you. So, um, 
so this part A establishes you know, what the, the maximum amounts of, of water that Andover is going to provide to us. The next paragraph, paragraph B, talks about our um, ability or obligation to control our use of water. And while Andover, I'm sorry, North Reading is not um, required to take any certain minimum amounts and it has discretion as to how it uses its water, um, we've agreed that, um, you know, that, that there might be certain drought conditions that require um, that conservation measures be undertaken. So what we've agreed is that um, if Andover imposes um, drought restrictions or water use restrictions on its customers, then those same restrictions will be imposed on North Reading's customers. And, and this was a, a significant issue of debate because um, as originally proposed by Andover, um, they wanted to treat the entire town of North Reading as a single customer for purposes of drought management. And that's significant because under their drought management plan, their 25 highest users are subject to more stringent controls than their smaller users. And so if North Reading was characterized as one of the 25 largest users, then all the residences in North Reading would have been subject to more stringent controls than the residences in Andover. And so it was important to us as the negotiating team to make sure that there was parity and to make sure that, that the residential customers in North Reading are treated the same way the residential customers treated in Andover are. And the, the language in this agreement reflects that now. Um, North Reading is obligated to impose the same restrictions on its customers as Andover does on, on its customers. And North Reading as a whole is not considered one customer for purposes of drought management. But if we have a single customer is drunk, fits into the one of the 25 total, Highest. right? They would be imposed on that one. The Andover restrictions will be imposed upon them. Okay. That sounds right. Understand? Our customers are going to be treated equally in the same as Andover customers. But if we have one big user, they have a, right now they have a, um, a cap at the 25 highest users can be subject to greater restrictions, water restrictions than the rest of the community. So we agreed if one of our users falls into that 25 category, they would be subject to the same terms and conditions. So that's but basically going to affect bi the big, bigger businesses. Uh, huge business, yeah, are, huge businesses. For our, in, on our side. Yes. And, and to date, they have yet to have to impose any restrictions. They've had a voluntary restriction. That's it, to date. That, that's a common requirement of other utilities across the state to identify the big users and I mean that's where you're going to get your biggest bang for the buck if you have to impose try to more stringent back, yeah. restrictions mm -hmm. so it's it's not unusual it's not unusual so there if you join them there you're now one big giant system they're going to identify the 25 biggest users w between both systems but for the regular resident here you know if it's a Monday Wednesday Friday a Tuesday Thursday watering restriction and nobody on Saturday in Andover it's going to be the same in North Reading but if it's not imposed in Andover it doesn't have to be imposed in North Reading now North Reading still has the ability to impose restrictions on our own but Andover cannot force us to do it okay anything else on B okay so moving on to page four if we could go to D. Oh, sure. So I was, that's where D. I was about to go. Oh, okay. I thought you were page. Oh, that is on four. Yep. So go on. Okay. I'll let you go first. Um, sure. So paragraph D is the most, um, I think, significant paragraph on, on this page. And um, what this does essentially is the parties agree that um, Andover is responsible for supplying I'll say potable water or water that meets federal drinking water guidelines up to the town line. Okay? So at the town line, the water Andover guarantees that the water is going to meet federal drinking water requirements. Once it passes over the line, North Reading is responsible for ensuring that it continues to meet those guidelines as it ends up 
in the you know the taps of the individual users. Um, so you know each party is essentially responsible for what happens on their side of the line. And if something goes wrong on North Reading's side, Andover is not responsible for that, um, and it's solely. Um, North Reading's um, responsibility to fix it before it gets to the end customer. I think this is a very important paragraph, especially with all the news that's been out there related to the issues with the what's flowing into the Ipswich River. I'm sorry, into the Merrimack River, the feces that are coming from the the sewer district, sanit sanitation district pipes. Um, you know, so for me, this is a very important paragraph, and I believe for Mr. Schultz. One of his concerns, which you'll hear tonight when uh, I read his statement, is, you know, his only concern really is around this paragraph. I mean, he's, he doesn't believe it. He doesn't trust that the, the Merrimack River can meet the water quality standards long term based on the amount of... Uh, Michael. Yes. The town of Andover has a, a very unique situation, being a user of water off the uh, Merrimack River. And that is that they have Haggis Pond, and they draw the water from the from the pond into the plant, and they replenish water they take out of the pond from the Merrimack River. So when there is an alert that goes up, they can control not taking water and still have this gigantic, you want to call it a water tank, yeah, reservoir, tank. reservoir. Yeah. So they they're actually in better situation in some of the other communities that draw water directly off the <coughs> and Andover tests their water you know, daily regularly and then in addition to that when there is um, a release into the river they're notified immediately Andover has shut down the re taking of water from the Merrimack River mm -hmm. use the reserves that they have and then once it's passed take it Replenish. Nice. So, to Bob's point again, they were actually in a pretty good position, mm -hmm. and and have been managing it for years. Uh, it's it is notable that it is notable that you know we get sixty to sixty five percent of our water from Andover currently, and we haven't had any issues with the water quality yeah. uh, to, to date. You know, Rob, so uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Steve. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Rob, could you talk about the flow rate on the Merrimack, which yeah. is something that we don't. A lot of people don't think about yeah it, or, or it, what it, that means yeah it flow, I, I forget the exact number now but it flows at something like three million gallons per minute flows by any one point in the river so when there is a a, a, a CSO combined sewer overflow event um, you know you've, you've heard it probably all your life that dilution is the solution to pollution it, it kind of holds true that quantity of water um, disperses the contaminants from that overflow quite quickly because of the, the enormous amount of water. That's not to say they're still there, they are there, but because of the volume and the speed at which the river is moving, an event like that passes by very quickly. Um, you know, it's it's a, simply a slug of water that's being moved from one area you know, out to the ocean. Um, it, happens, it happens rather quickly. I think the bottom line on all this is that they're still required, whether there are CSCs, you call it? CSO. CSOs in the water or not, they still have to meet the federal standards they before are it gets to our town line. Drinking water suppliers are under extremely stringent standards for water quality. And we have strict standards here in North Reading you are also to make sure when we're whaling it to our residents yes. that it, it meets the standard or exceeds it. Yep. Right. Um, and I am not aware um, of any time in the history where they have violated any standards. They have a, a fairly modern treatment facility that's designed specifically to handle um, what I would call uh, flashy or changing water, river, river water quality changes quite frequently. Yep. The type of process that they have is well designed for that. So no matter, so no matter what you're reading out there, the fact that Andover has this res reservoir, they can draw money to draw the water from for a period of time until the issues pass by on the river um, I think is a, a massive benefit to the whole operation that we need to take into account when we're considering this option. 
and it's a big benefit. So I just want to make sure that that's clearly noted. Can I ask a couple of questions on that? No. Next. <laughs> Go ahead. How um, often do they have raw sewage inflows into the Merrimack River? It sounds like they have it quite a bit if they have this sort of backup plan. It's, it's, it's fairly frequently. It happens after fairly significant rain events. And what happens, what happens is the way they built the, the um, stormwater and the sewer systems back in the day is they combine them all into one. They're, com they're called combined sewer systems. And with the rain events, when they, uh, you know, they get up there in, in volume, it just overwhelms the systems. So it doesn't happen every rain event. It doesn't happen all that frequently. These communities are constantly being forced um, by the federal government to upgrade their systems and um, mitigate these issues all the time. Um, so, you know, some systems it happens more frequently than the others. Um, and the, you know, the community, like I said, are many of them are under uh, consent orders to resolve these problems. But it's it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time to do it. And um, I can't, and I've only lived here for 16 years, but I can't recall any time when we were alerted to these kind of, uh, unless reading it in the paper. But I can't recall being alerted by Andover. There's an issue that you know, we're addressing. Do they have any obligation to let us know as their water customer that this is happening or this has happened? So in, in addition to us being their water customer, their own residents are their water customers yeah. too. And what they have is they have a, I call it a multiple barrier system to protect them against having a, a problem with not meeting all the requirements of the Federal Safe Drinking Water <coughs> Act. So. Number one is they get water from the Merrimack River, but if there's a problem in the, in the river, as was described, they can shut down their intakes. So they don't have to pull that, that slug of distasteful water into their pond. Second thing is they dump into one side of their pond. That water then sits in the pond, and they draw from the treatment plant from the opposite side of the pond. So the pond acts as a barrier as well. Then thirdly, in their treatment plant, they have multiple levels of barrier. They use a fairly sophisticated system where they actually ozonate the water. They take uh, ozone and they bubble it through the water. And that is, it's a fairly intensive uh, way to get rid of any type of contamination, especially if there's fecal contamination or anything. It's a fairly sophisticated way to do that. Then they have a double barrier filter system after that. So you have, you know, stop taken from the river, put the water in the pond, ozonate, filter one, filter two, and then they disinfect significantly after. So they have about six layers of okay. protection against anything that may be in the river getting into the drinking water supply. As, as Rob mentioned, some of the other communities, the Manchesters, the Lowell's, the Lawrence's, they draw direct out of the river. So they lack a couple of those levels of barrier. And they still have to meet the same drinking water standards and they're still able to do that. Andover actually has a couple additional layers of protection that I, that I feel uh, benefit the town. Is it, um, they're tell, are they telling their water customers that, you know, this is an issue that's occurred or? So when they would have to notify their customers if there is when they're in violation of a federal drinking water yeah. standard, which that's they have never not, happened. It has not right. happened. And okay. they would have to notify, as a customer, they'd have to notify us. There are certain triggers that if you, if you exceed certain levels, and it's, it's an immediate notification if it's like a tier one event and there's a tier two and a tier two, three that you have longer periods to notify your customers on. Um, Not to bring up a, a, you know, a sore subject, but we've had, uh, it's called T, total trihalomethanes, and we've had to notify people when that event occurs here in North Reading. We haven't seen that type of event occur with the water coming from Andover. So how did, how did that get into the system when that, that contamination occurred? So so it's caused by adding chlorine to drinking water, and the chlorine in the drinking water can it forms what they call disinfection byproducts. So it was more a product of us chlorinating the water we were producing at our wells. And uh, as the water ages through the system, sometimes on the very ends of the system, you have these these trihalomethanes that form. Can I ask just one more question? Because I know we're talking about Andrew, but I'm, I want to ask as we're going along about MWRA if you can answer this. There are there any um, issues with contamination of their? I know their water sources are pretty well protected reservoirs, but are there have you been aware of, or do you know of any kind of contamination that they may have had to their 
water reserves? I, yeah, I am not aware of any. Um, and like you acknowledged, um, their, their reservoir, the Quabbin Reservoir and the Wachusett Reservoirs are um, very well protected, watershed protection. They own all of the land around it for miles and miles. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, you know, it's, it's significantly more protected. You know, rivers tend to run through urban areas and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are higher risks, um, certainly. Um, but with treatment and like, as Mark said, the number of barriers they have to protect against those sort of events um, that can be mitigated. Okay. So I think in the articles that you've recently read, yep. Um, they talk about there's uh, a number of Andover residents that have been getting sick and they're tying it back to the water so there needs to be some explanation to it I think between now and June 4th I think it's very important again I think it's one of the issues that um, Mr. Schultz is very concerned about and I think all the members on the uh, board are very concerned with as well I'm not sure would you read the article actually that one I don't think I read I, I read one this morning that Michael Ford made, but the Eagle Tribune article that you know, some of us read over the yeah, weekend. But I don't recall that discussing. But they refer to it that there is uh, residents that have spent an increase in sickness in their time. Gastrointestinal. Gastrointestinal. Yeah, yeah. Ga was that in the same article? It was. Yeah, yeah visits yeah. to the emergency room and uh, tying it to gastrointestinal okay. issues in the wake of combined sewer overflows. Okay. I can, I'll certainly look into that. I just think we need to get an answer to it. Yep. And I assume Andover is well aware of it, and I assume they have some kind of response prepared. <coughs> but it would be helpful for us to have that for our June 4th meeting, and if we had it before, <coughs> we can make sure we were aware of it. Okay, let me, let me see what I can find. I think this is very important. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Good. Okay. Please continue. Thank you. Um, so as we move on, um, paragraphs um, E and F are um, essentially what were in the existing agreement. Um, in paragraph E, um, this deals with you know the, the locations in which the water is going to cross over from Andover into North Reading, and we included a new paragraph that would allow the construction of additional points of entry. This may or may not happen in the future, but at least it's there and it's it's an option. Um, paragraph F is, is almost identical to what's in the existing agreement. Um, it deals with um, meters, and um, right now I believe there is um, one meter installed at, at each entry point, and um, Andover is looking for the ability to install um, a second set of meters so that they can have a double check. I think we talked about this in past meetings. I think we're going to add another meeting on, meter on our end as well, right? So we would look to uh, probably replace the existing meter so we have brand new metering at the two interconnections. Uh, the MW, this is not dissimilar to what happens with MWRA communities. MWRA has their own meter and then the towns have a, basically an inline, a similar meter so that they can just have a check and balance on mm -hmm. each other. Okay. Um, moving on to page five. Um, G, H, I, J are, are all um, unchanged from the existing agreement. Um, K is um, similar to the, the issue that, that we discussed before. Um, not only is, is each side, each town responsible for the water quality on their side of the line, but they're also responsible for the infrastructure. So if there's a, a pipe break on their side of the line, they're responsible for fixing it. If there's a pipe break on North Reading's side of the line, North Reading is responsible for fixing it. Is, is pipe Pipe breaking isn't part of force majeure events, right? No, no. Failure of the supply. Breakage of lines or pipe. Well, it, it could be a, a force majeure event. Mm -hmm. if, if it a, was catastrophic. If a, right, if a pipe breaks and it prevents them from being able to um, supply us with water, okay. then that would be a force majeure event that would excuse them from providing the full amount. Okay. Right? Um, but I think it's, it's important. We did spend a lot of time on this definition of what is a, yeah. a force majeure. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, that we had taken out um, that Andover wanted in was they wanted a water drought to be considered a force majeure event. And, and we worked very hard to you know, explain why that should not be. 
and um, it is not part of this agreement that a water drought Good. warning or emergency is a force majeure event. Okay. Um, all right, so now we get into paragraph L, and I think this is um, the next few paragraphs are a significant departure from um, the existing agreement. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think the, the parties recognize that, um, you know, if um, North Reading was going to move forward with, with this agreement, that um, Andover had to be ready, willing, and able to be North Reading's sole water supplier. Um, you know, the North Reading's wells are not going to be sufficient to meet its demands um, very much further into the future. And um, North Reading doesn't want to be in a position of having to buy <coughs> small amounts of water from, from various different <coughs> sources. Um, so what, what the first part of paragraph L acknowledges is that um, once we get to a point where um, both sides have obtained increases in their permits to authorize um, North Reading to take first up to 2.6 million gallons and then 3 million gallons, that um, Andover will be North Reading's sole provider. And so that as long as Andover is able to meet North Reading's demand, then North Reading is not going to go and try to buy water from some other third party. Um, the exception to that in paragraph two is that North Reading can still maintain um, interconnections with other either municipalities or even the MWRA to account for emergency situations, a force majeure event, or some other circumstance in which um, Andover is not meeting North Reading's demand. As we move over This on. is a, a, a total, if, I don't, if you don't mind me commenting, oh, I think this is a total oddball type of thing that they threw in here. And it really, I mean, it, it, we're obviously going to draw our water from, from them, but why would we tie our hands to agreeing to that with them if we find a, another utility provider that we can utilize for water? Why would we agree to that? What would be then the point? Then why are we asking for a 99-year agreement? For certainty, continuity, and, you know, right. having that source and available. To get water from another yeah. source, first you've got to get a permit. Well, and I think that's the key. The, the, the DP isn't going to let you do anything else anyway. I just think it's such an oddball thing to put in there, though. I don't, I don't think we have a choice because we have the DP is going to require it, right? They're not going to say... North Ray, we want to prove you to get it from Andover, but we're also going to give you approval to go here, there, and everywhere else to get more. Yeah. Well, I, the I, can let, the permit. I can let Mark and Rob address that part of it. I do think that there are some practical limitations that would prevent us from being able to draw water from multiple sources at the same time. I think from Andover's perspective, you know, they are, they are making a, a commitment on their side that they will reserve a certain amount of water for North Reading. And there is no um, um, agreement on North Reading's part that it's going to take that amount of water. Um, so as I mentioned in, at the beginning, we're not agreeing that, that we're going to take any minimum volume. However, they're responsible for setting aside the maximum. And so from their perspective, if they're going to set aside this maximum volume of water and they're going to make infrastructure investments in order to do that, then they want an assurance from us that we're not going to just take a trickle and then go someplace else because we think it's, it's a better deal. Um, but maybe Mark and or Rob can explain a little bit better as to what the practical implications are for North Reading that would probably prevent us from doing that anyways. So just to jump on top of what Greg was saying there, so one of the concerns they raised is say 25 years from now their water treatment plant needs to be replaced. They need to replace that with a water treatment plant capable of supplying all their maximum day needs, but also based on this agreement supplying all of our max day, day needs. Mm -hmm. If the day they go to start that treatment plant we say we're out of the agreement, we're going to MWRA then they financed a much larger facility than they need. So they were, they were concerned that there is, not, there is, outside of this, there's nothing in this agreement 
tying us to them at all in terms of our, our water supplier. Uh, in terms of the practicality, uh, I'm going to stay away from the permitting question, but just the uh, the question of mixing two different sources of water, so MWRA and Andover water, both are very high quality water, um, and you know either one I think could help us meet all the Safe Drinking Water Acts going uh, requirements going forward. But mixing the two presents problems because it's a different uh, different chlorine or disinfection system. One uses straight chlorine, one uses chlorine mixed with ammonia. Oh, yeah, Those two get into the middle of the system. Yeah. And if you're taking from both, you don't know where that line is. Mm -hmm. um, just the, 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 the pH of the water being different from the two, we could create a red water zone in our system that fluctuates back and forth. And just the flows being different day to day. So mixing the two systems. And, it, from a practical standpoint, you know, the question had come up, well, can't we just zone off a section of our system and, and maybe put one of the storage tanks on the MWRA system and the other two on the Andover system? Things could be done. They would probably be problematic, and especially for the system that switched from one to the other. In the short term, there would be a transition period where, you know, we'd probably be doing a lot of flushing. So to do it on a, a have the mix on a daily basis is not a very practical answer. <coughs> I wasn't actually thinking in terms of that, but I was just thinking, you know, 25 years ago we all had a pager. No one has a pager anymore. I was just thinking in terms of how this technology shifts from massive cell towers to small cell antennas, that we don't know how the utility provisions are going to shift 50 years from now. We can't envision that, you know. And, and it, as an alternative to this, they had suggested a minimum volume. And we weren't very happy with yeah. the thought of a minimum I, I remember volume. Steve um, mentioned for a couple different reasons, but one of them is too, we don't know what DEP is going to do. So right now DEP says you should be below a certain threshold per person per day in your system. There's pressure to drive those volumes down. So if we agreed to a minimum and DEP came and put huge conservation restrictions on top of everyone, that would apply to us because we're going to have permits from DEP now. We don't know that we'd be able to guarantee we'd be buying any minimum volume. So. It is, it, I'll agree, it, it's slightly odd language. It's stuff that kind of entered late in the, uh, in the discussion. Um, and it is what it is at this point. And I, and I just have one thing, one la I'm not sure. No, no. I have one Thank last thing know. related to the force majeure. And you know, if they have, when you brought up the scenario about a water main break in their town, you know, there should be an agreement that allows us to use our resources to assist them in fixing that force majeure issue quicker. I mean, I assume there's been some kind of discussion between the two parties to help rectify these force majeure issues faster by the communities working together versus, you know, us sitting around the, waiting. The, the biggest uh, incentive for them is it if wants. they don't sell us water, they don't make any money. I agree. Mike, I, I'll, I'll just address yeah. that. So that what, the that one doesn't really have, seem to have mattered all this time, Good. though. So. The one <laughs> event that's occurred since I've been here that I really would consider a force majeure event is it was a hot summer Friday afternoon about 3 o'clock and the pipe between North Reading and Andover underneath the Scud River it broke you could go and see the, the river itself was boiling because the water was coming up from beneath it they worked very well with us we didn't have a contractor locally that was capable of dealing with that uh, their crew was on site the same time we got on site um, they suggested this, <coughs> this contractor they've used in, in different uh, instances the guy came out there on Friday afternoon and worked you know, well into the wee hours of the morning assisting us. So there's, I, there's nothing compelling both towns or requiring both towns to assist each other. Normal water main breaks, they're able to deal with on their end. We're able to deal with our end. It's those truly force majeure events where we're, we're both going to be looking at maybe a third party contractor with bigger, bigger toys than we have to do the job. I just want to make sure it wasn't restricted. It, yeah, and that's what I was going to say is I don't know that there's anything in here that that specifically says, you know, we will go into their town to, to help them, but there's certainly nothing in here that would prevent us from doing that. Um, so as we move on to, to page six and um, carrying on with the, um, the, the sole provider um, language, um, paragraph three, um, so address, so, so paragraphs one and two address the situation of Andover being North Reading's sole provider 
up to 3 million gallons a day maximum withdrawal. Paragraphs three and four on page six address the situation of, well, what if North Reading needs more than um, 3 million gallons per day? And, and what we agreed to um, is that we would essentially give them um, a right of first refusal or a first option. So that if North Reading um, has, you know, has the authority or all the permitting approvals to go up to 3 million gallons a day, but it needs more. Let's say it needs to go to 4 million gallons a day. Um, North Reading would first give Andover notice and an opportunity to meet that demand. In, in other words, you know, give us a chance to, to sell it to you first. And if Andover is able to meet that demand within a certain period of time, then they would continue to be North Reading's sole pr provider up to that new amount. If, however, um, Andover and North Reading cannot reach an agreement as to that additional amount, or permits cannot be obtained, or infrastructure cannot be financed, then North Reading would be free to go to a third party um, to um, obtain that additional amount of water. So, that, so in other words, I mean, that sort of disintegrates itself, because we wouldn't be able to do that based on what you've just said. We're not going to be able to say, okay, we're going to get up 3 million gallons per day from them, and then we're going to connect to the MR, MWRA, MRA, MWRA. So these are just really additional provisions that really shouldn't, in my opinion, even be a part of this agreement, because we're not effectively, based on what you've just said, going to be able to split it, so to speak. So who wanted these paragraphs? I think that's the question. And, and, what, and I, don't, I really don't think it's a necessary addition to yeah. we, what so we, we had in there as a summary of terms. That we pushed for? So, no, so we know. wanted the ability to go someplace else for more than, than 3 million gallons if, if we couldn't get it from them. Um, they wanted this first option language. And I guess, you know, this is, is only a circumstance in which Andover is, is not able to meet North Reading's demand. Beyond three million. Beyond the three which, million gallons. Again, it, and, it's, and while it's not we, a real option for us based on what we've just heard. Well, it so could, let's say we need four, four million gallons a day because we double in size in or the next Rob, 50 Rob years. You know? So let's, let's look at the alternative. If sewers in on Concord Street and O'Leary Chemical wants to come and build a huge facility on Concord Street that is a huge water using facility, Right now it's a truck terminal because that's all the septic system will support. But we get a huge opportunity to have a huge water user come in on Concord Street. Sure. How do we deal with that? Now we're up, in, we, we're already at our three million high, and they're a million gallon a day customer. We need another million gallons a day. Where do we go? So the, the opportunity to go to Andover, ask them, are you able and willing to supply another million gallons a day to the town of North Reading? It's on Concord Street. It's possible to zone off a section of town and put a pipeline to MWRA and just supply Concord Street with MWRA water. So if Andover says no, it gives us the option then to to look somewhere else. Yeah, it, it's a good. Uh, there's I, a, I, I, there is, is a little bit of protection for is. us too. Yeah. That if North think if North Reading and Andover are both competing for O'Leary Chemical and they say to us no, we're not going to we're not going to supply you. So you have you know, or they just drag us out. We want the ability to find that water. Yeah, to I mean, be able to 99 use. years is a long time, so I, yeah, yeah, I understand why you have it there. That's fine. I just, I'm, I'm good with it. So that was, that was our demand, Kate. That was our demand, okay. I, we, I think it should say, I'm just, and again, this is the first time I'm seeing it, and you <laughs> have mentioned this to, as part of this when we've talked about it, but I think it should say that if they can't meet the demand beyond that, then we, we shouldn't be tied to them for the three. We should. We might be able to go to another provider for the full amount that we need, and then we say goodbye. Yeah. And again, that cancels their, you know, their long-term ability to yeah. do their revenue projections. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, we were thinking if we could cull out a. And again, it's only going to be certain portions of this community where things of this nature may happen, where a large user may come in. We would then potentially have the ability to 
create another district. Yeah, I, I would grow. I wouldn't want to hold them um, in harm because we want more than the three million. I mean, you're talking about taking it all away from. Uh, well, again, they, they may have to go back and get more permitting as far as yeah. the withdrawal from the from the river and. Right, but we shouldn't take away the other three million. If this is an option, why haven't we done this already? Well, why didn't we do this on Concord already? No, we weren't allowed to. We we have no viable options. I, I, we've been studying so you're just thinking of contingencies. We've been studying sewer years. for twenty plus years in North yeah. Reading. We're getting closer to that becoming a reality. Yeah. So once sewer happens. Again, we're talking a 99-year agreement. So sewer plus the length of the agreement means none of us can see where it goes completely. So we're trying to cover a multitude of contingencies. That's a good one. Michael. Could I offer two things on this? The first is this paragraph, paragraph 4, is the only change from what was placed in Dropbox, Dropbox at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And the change in it was to effectively state that Andover would have 24 months from the date we notify them of our need for additional water to for us to for us to go through with them and get the permitting and for them to obtain and for us to obtain approvals and for um, the parties to obtain appropriations for construction to take place and the change is the way it read before the construction would have had to be completed within the 24 months and I think we, I'll tell you, I agree that that may not be a realistic timeline based on our own experience here mm. with considering this. So we did not view that as unfavorable to the, to the town. I think it just further clarified um, the, the steps. And again, it would require them to go and get an appropriation to effectuate the construction on a timely basis uh -huh. before we could move on. Or, or it could, or who knows, it could be us too. Or it could knows? be us too, right. And the other thing that I, I will note is just relative to this issue of additional volume, um, I, I think Andover was hopeful that it would be able to, um, if we needed a 1 million gallons per day, that if they could provide us 0.5 million gallons per day, that we would take the 0.5 million gallons per day. But based on what we have gone through over the past four or five years with regard to looking for a as comprehensive a solution as possible, we were able to come to an agreement with terms that would say that if we need one million gallons and they can't provide us one million gallons, we have the option to go somewhere else that can provide us that one million gallons instead of being stuck having to, try to find two new sources. Uh, it really gives us some flexibility um, and, it, and it's reflective of what we've gone through over the past five years, honestly. In five weeks. Five months. <laughs> <laughs> five past five hours. Five hours. Can I get five, five days. days. <laughs> I have one question on this then. So for the provision of additional water beyond the three million gallons per day, is it going to be at the same rate as contained in this agreement? Or reaching an agreement means that would be at a different rate that gets charged. How is the rate for that additional amount? So any volume over 3 million gallons a day is above and beyond what this agreement provides for. So it, it does require, in paragraph 5, it, inquire, it requires approval of both towns' board of selectmen. Um, I, I think the rate may enter into the... A new, a different agreement on the additional amount. Instead of just writing in here, it'll be at the same rate that's being charged for up to 3 million. It, that's right. It's, Can it's we just handwrite that yeah. in there now? And <laughs> well, obviously, it's up to the board. This isn't a, a signed agreement yet, but um, you know, I think the anticipation here is that you know we would lock in up to three million gallons, and then anything beyond that would be subject to a new negotiation that both parties would have to agree to. Okay. Um, and and you know, the the thinking here is that. You know, we would have this 12-month period to, to negotiate, but, you know, at the same time, North Reading would be exploring its its options. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. You said Reading. No, North Reading. Yeah. Oh, I'm right. sorry, North Reading. Yes, yeah. uh, so we'll be exploring its options. And so, you know, if if Andover cannot come to the, the table with something competitive, um, then, you know, the door remains open for... Um, North Reading to, to go with that other option. And the the and other the, important part is is that up to this three million per day, it's a lock unless mutually agreed upon to sever relations. In other words, they can't change it. 
And, and, and actually, Kate, I think you would be at, at that period in time, you'd be in a stronger position to actually get lower rates. When you think of bulk purchasing, you're purchasing more. It's costing them less. I think you would actually be in a stronger position leaving this open. And, you know, future boards should recognize that okay. to get an even better deal. That's my opinion. I just, I'm thinking, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of in the context of how yes, it's more. been negotiated. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, I understand. Okay, Maybe that would be different down At that line. point, we'll be safe drinking all the, the same water. The more we buy, right, the more money they have for capital improvements and keeping control of their whole the community rates. water rate, mm -hmm. which we benefit from, too. So. Okay. Please continue. Thank you. Um, so um, moving on with, with section 2.2, this is the, the force majeure section that we spoke about earlier. Um, and really the only significant change here is to remove um, water drought um, warning or emergency from what could constitute a, a force majeure event that would justify them shutting off our water supply or reducing uh, North Reading's water supply. Um, Moving on to, to page uh, seven, um, no significant changes to notices or manners of communication. Um, paragraph 2.4, this is a, a new section um, dealing with, with future projects. And so this, um, some of this relates back to what we talked about earlier and um, permitting for increases in authorized withdrawals to get up to the three million gallons. So that's part A. And um, what's what I think is significant, and this is brand new, I think this kind of was written at 10 o'clock last night, most of this, um, is, is this idea that, um, you know, North Reading will apply right away um, for that increase in its authorized withdrawal from 1.5 a million gallons to, to the 2.6 million gallons. Um, and that if that approval is denied by the state for whatever reason, then um, this agreement terminate, automatically terminates and remains in effect as a sort of lame duck agreement for five years um, while North Reading has the opportunity to go look someplace else. So basically the idea we talked about Andover being North Reading's sole supplier. Um, if that cannot come to fruition and we can't get the permitting to accomplish that, then this agreement ends. Um, and it remains in effect for a period of five years so that North Reading has an ability to look so and go someplace else, um, but we're not tied to it for 99 years at the 1.5 million gallons that we have now. Um, okay. So I don't know if there are any questions about that. If not, um, paragraph B, um, I think, comes right out of the, the summary of terms from last year. And basically what it says is that, you know, once North Reading is, is buying um, the water from Andover, it can turn around and sell that to Reading. Um, and we agreed to, to language that if um, North Reading does go ahead and sell the water to a third party, that Andover is not responsible if that, if the water is not somehow compatible down the line. Um, paragraph C on page eight, this is right from the summary of terms that, that we would agree to work towards getting North Reading connected um, to the Greater Lawrence Sanitary District for um, sewer service. And um, what paragraph D says is that basically, you know, these future events are just that, future events. We're agreeing to explore them, but we're not agreeing to undertake any binding obligations. Right. Um, paragraph three, um, 3.1a, this sets forth the, the rate, and what this does is now it locks in a specific rate for the entire term of the 99 years. So it again looks at this and over tier one rate, which is their lowest rate structure, and says for the first 10 years, 
North Reading will pay 95% of that rate. Um, after 10 years, it will be that lowest tier one rate, but it can only increase by a total of 2.5% for each year. For the first 10? For the first, the first 10. 10. Okay. And then after that, it's subject to the same increases that annual right. rent. So in, in year, if in year eight, you know, they happen to go up 3%, we're only going to go up 2.5%. But in year 11, our rate will adjust to 95% of the tier one rate up in Andover. So we'll see an increase of more than 2.5%. Yeah. You know, but year the 11. adjustment will take place in year 11 if, if that occurs. So we recognize that, but at least now we can contemplate and budget and know that it's not going to increase more than 2.5% of what we'd be paying at the lower rate for the first 10 years. Okay. And they've already in their projections for the next five years built in a 2.5% or less. So it's the only following four years really that uh, they need to be concerned about. And with us as their customer, they can reasonably contemplate enough revenues to probably minimize because they've already factored in their capital projects out 10 years. So it doesn't appear as though it's going to be any more than that anyway. Okay. Um. The other thing about this is that um, what you'll see is that it commences on July 1st of 2017. And um, the side agreement that we discussed earlier um, addresses the procedure for um, North Reading to get a credit back um, for fiscal year 2018. So essentially, um, once this agreement is signed, North Reading gets the benefit of the new rate for the entirety of fiscal year 2018. So we're already saving money if this goes into effect. And that's because under our MOU that we have with them that was extended during this negotiation, we were paying a higher rate. That's correct. So cool. we're going to get a... And we're also scheduled for a 5% increase July 1st, this upcoming July 1st, if we don't have an agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, their initial stance was, you know, in the special legislation, and this was part of the uh, positioning they were taking, was that, you know, this doesn't become enacted and enforced unless and until the special legislation is in effect. So if it happened July 10th, we would only get a credit for the fiscal year which we signed it, which would be 10 days in July, as opposed to all the way back to July 1st, 2017. So. We were very concerned. We believe because of the time delays, North Reading would have made a decision by the end of April, which is the original time that we talked about. We were entitled to the opportunity to have this agreement signed in the current fiscal year we're in. Therefore, we anticipated that we would have this if we entered into a long-term agreement with Andover. If we didn't, you know, it wasn't going to go into effect anyway. But we're this close. So they finally agreed, you know, that we would be entitled to the credit. And uh, they get a little bit hung up on, well, we can't deviate from the terms and conditions of the agreement that we had, but in order to do that, they would have to turn, you know, they would have to deviate from the terms and conditions that we had. And so then the suggestion came up at some point in the last week or so, well, let's make it effective immediately. Give us the credit, and then we'll deal with outside forces and third parties out of our control, which is the legislature, to refund that credit if it's through no fault of their own. And that's the side side agreement. Mm -hmm. So therefore, yes, we're going to reap the benefits right now back to July 1st, 2017. So the first year of this agreement, really, of the ten, first 10 years, will have already taken place. And I think it's fair to say we spent a lot of time getting to this <coughs> point. <coughs> yeah. We appreciate it. We really no, and again, they recognize, they, recognize, uh, they finally accepted the fact that they weren't going to convince us otherwise, that North Reading would be entitled to basically the, the rebate, you know, um, for fiscal year 2018, mm -hmm. if, you know, if not for the, their inability to deliver on a timely basis. So that was a huge step. And then... Uh, if it's out of their control, some third party, the legislature doesn't enact it, that's not their fault. We're not going to hold them responsible. Mm -hmm. We'll hold them harmless. OK. 
Okay. okay. Um, so moving on then, um, the billing procedure is, is the same as it was before. Um, so then moving on to um, page, um, page nine, um, there's a, a, a significant change um, with respect to the procedure for, for North Reading to dispute its bills. And you know, this was sort of something that, that was interjected by Andover where um, they were looking for the ability to um, have a provision in here that, that North Reading service could be terminated if the bill was unpaid, even if it had a, a legitimate dispute over that bill. So uh, we came to an agreement in section 3.5 over, over a procedure that would not only prevent that, but um, would, would allow the, the parties, each party to have um, an incentive to resolve any such dispute expeditiously. And so, so if there is a dispute concerning a bill, um, North Reading would be required to pay to Andover either the undisputed portion of the bill or um, 67.5% of the total, whichever is greater. The remaining amount or the disputed portion would be placed into escrow um, and held by an independent third party until such time as the dispute was resolved. And then, you know, the parties would either agree or a court would decide how those funds are ultimately dispersed. Um, but in the meantime, um, North Reading would be protected in that it, it couldn't have its water shut off based on non-payment if it's disputing the bill. I, yes. put, I haven't looked in a bit of time at our current uh, contract. Do we get a penalty if we're delayed on a payment? Does that happen already? Yes. Okay. Yes, the, um, the penalty sorry. provisions. I'm looking at Mike. Are, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, those penalty Defer provisions. So that just mirrors <laughs> what's in place yeah, already the, with that, them. That's already in, in place. Okay. But we do pay our bills on time. So <laughs> of course we do. Yes. Mark made a very good Mark point several it. times. <laughs> you know, he, he he went out on a limb. I think he said to say that we're probably the only one that pays you on a timely basis. <laughs> well, <I think>. mm -hmm. <laughs> but we never definitely are the, the the customer that pays their bill on time. Every one of the few. So. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Um, so then, moving on to 3.6 adjustments. Um, these are the the what we've referred to as credits that were set forth um, in the summary of terms. So the first one, paragraph A, um, is is a credit um, to reimburse um, North Reading for costs that it incurred um, to you know investigate joining the MWRA. This is actually something that's in the 2017 amendment to the existing agreement, so it just carries forward into this agreement. Um, paragraph B um, relates to the credit for, um, for North Reading based on the rate being retroactive to the beginning of um, fiscal year 2018. <coughs> um, and again, there are um, provisions in the side agreement that deal with um, how these, these credits get administered um, in between the two agreements and what happens if the new agreement um, somehow falls apart. Okay. okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Through you, just a, a note that the summary of terms when it was signed in 2017 called for North Reading to provide documentation to Andover, which Andover would then review and approve. Uh, we have provided that documentation to the town of Andover. And as you see in here, that, that stipulation has been removed and um, they've uh, agreed to the credit in the full amount. That's great. And I want to thank Mr. Clark uh, uh, yeah, for his efforts to assemble the, the wheelbarrow full of papers <laughs> and to deliver it to Andover. And it's the right thing for them to do and it's the right thing for us to ask for for our community based on the change in direction. Mr. Chairman, do you, I'd also note that there was a, an error in the IMA that identified the amount uh, annually as $93,500. We've corrected that here. It was always supposed to be 95300 yeah. And the monthly rate has been adjusted accordingly. Okay. So uh, moving on to page 10, these miscellaneous provisions are largely unchanged from, from what's in the existing agreement. Um, 
moving on to page 11, um, section 4.8 was probably, I'd say, the most time consuming um, issue and provision for us to work through. And I think this is another one where we didn't have final agree to language until late last night. Um, so, so basically, um, to walk you through this, um, the first paragraph of section 4.8 says that, that the agreement is in full force and effect from the date that it's first signed, which we think at this point is, is going to be June 4th, okay? And it's, a, it's an agreement that is in effect for the maximum term authorized by Massachusetts law unless it's sooner terminated. So what that means is that um, unless it's, it's terminated either by agreement of the parties or the happening of one of these events that we'll talk about in a minute, this would be um, a maximum term agreement of 25 years, okay? Um, but we recognize that nobody wants this to be a 25 year agreement, but under the laws it's written now, that's the maximum term for which we can enter into an agreement. So what we do in the subsequent paragraphs is we address the, the situation of what happens if um, the legislation is or is not enacted. So. Um, what the next sent paragraph says is that um, the parties acknowledge that they've petitioned the legislature to authorize an agreement of up to 99 years. If that legislation is not enacted and made effective, which means passed by the legislature and signed by the governor on or before August 15th, then this agreement automatically terminates on that date. If the legislation is enacted and made effective on or before August 15th, but it's not in the same form submitted by the parties, then um, there'll be a period, a seven day window in which the parties can attempt to address the changes made by the legislature. If they can't within that seven day window, the agreement automatically terminates. Okay. So this paragraph essentially addresses what if the, the legislature fails us and doesn't give us either permission for the 99 year agreement or gives us something different than what we petitioned for, then this agreement automatically goes away. There's a small window of time where we can extend that period or we can try to renegotiate to address the changes of the legislature. If we can't, it's over. Okay, and it was very important to, to your negotiating team that, that there, this not be an opportunity to start over again, you know, to have another six, seven months or a year of negotiation. Well, there would so definitely be a new negotiating team. <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> yeah, after this. No. <laughs> um, so it's a very small window, and if the legislation is not there, the agreement ends. Um, what the third paragraph says is that um, if the, the legislation is enacted by that deadline, then each um, town's board of selectmen has to sign the agreement a second time. Um, and, and this was to address Andover's concern that the agreement could not be entered into before the legislation was passed. So what we said was, well, we think everything else can go into effect prior to the legislation passing but we'll agree to sign it again after that happens. However, the vote to take the second signature has to be taken at the same time as the vote to authorize the agreement so that the second signature is just a ministerial act. You come into the town administrator's office and you sign your name. There's no second vote, mm -hmm. only a second signature. Just an action. Okay, so that was the, the compromise. They get their second set of signatures but we get our finality right away on, on June 4th. And if for some reason either side decides they're not gonna come in and sign that second signature, then the agreement terminates, but the side agreement provides for certain penalties for each side if that were to happen, okay? Yep. Um, finally, the, the fourth paragraph says that um, 
the parties have the opportunity to extend the time for the legislature to act or for the, the parties to give their um, ratification. But if um, the agreement fails, or I should say if the agreement is terminated, either based on the failure of the legislation or the failure of the parties to second sign, then the um, prior original agreement re would, would be revived and remain in effect. Okay, so that this way, North Reading still has a supply of water for this foreseeable future so that it can explore its options. Okay. Wow, that covered almost every conceivable option. Except well, for mosquito bites, and Lyme, yeah, mosquito bites and Lyme disease. We <laughs> didn't cover that, but and, and I think for, it probably would have been result. injected into the conversation, but we decided to have it. And, and just to, to point out one final change in the termination provision, under the original agreement that you have now, only Andover was authorized to terminate. North Reading had no option of terminating. We changed that so now there's a mutual, um, it can be terminated by mutual agreement. Only. Okay. Only. Yes. Just keep. So that's the agreement. Are there other questions, concerns? No. For the time it took, it should be about 143 pages instead of 12. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, through you, could yes. I just ask Mr. Corbett to clarify the scenarios, if any, where the this agreement is not made effective for a 99 year term what happens with our current ima is there a, because there's language that we've had in that side that that interim period agreement i know we're trying to avoid calling it a side agreement but that's what it is um, but the interim period agreement that we're talking about it, it addresses that and to my understanding there's there isn't a situation where we aren't covered that, that's correct. There, there's no situation in which we aren't covered. Um, and so if for, for any of the reasons, and as I mentioned at the very beginning, right, there are four ways in which this could fall apart once it's signed the first time. Okay? Legislature doesn't act. Legislature acts, but in a way that was not authorized by the parties. Legislature acts, but Andover doesn't sign the second time. Legislature acts, but North Reading doesn't sign the second time. If any of those events happen, the current agreement is revived and is in fact extended for an additional year. Um, there are, at, at North Reading's option. Um, there are then other provisions um, for, um, that address these credits if that happens. So for example, um, the way that, that the agreement that we've reached is that um, North Reading, by the time this fiscal year ends, there will be three months of bills that North Reading will not have yet paid, April, May, and June of 2018. Um, so the credit for the lower fiscal year 18 rate or the new rate will be applied to those three bills, okay? But what we agreed is that if one of those four events happens and this agreement is canceled, we will give that credit back. That's and paragraph four. That, that's 190, correct. 190, 600, right? right? Okay. Um, but if um, the agreement fails because Andover refuses to sign, then we only give half of that credit back and we get to keep the other half of the credit. So that's Andover's incentive not to walk away from the table between the two signatures. Oh, yeah, okay. that, on, that's on paragraph other, four you're talking yeah. about. Yes. Okay. That's paragraph um, On the other side, if North Reading walks away between the two signatures, then North Reading not only has to pay back that, that credit that it received to reset us back, but it gives up the additional credits it would have been entitled to um, for the work it put into joining the MWRA. So, so both sides have an incentive not to walk away between the two signatures. And that's what this interim agreement addresses. What I'd like to do, if I could at this time, before we go on, is to read Mr. Schultz's letter, because it may have some, uh, may be able to answer some of his concerns, at least to the public. 
and, and it ties to this agreement a little bit as well. So it says that while I'm unable to attend tonight's meeting due to a family obligation, I wish to state for the record my opposition to the Andover 99 year water deal. I am strongly concerned with the safety aspects of the water emanating from the Merrimack River versus water from the Corbin Reservoir. The Merrimack River has much industry on it and many raw sewage inflows during storms. The Corbin has no industry on it and is in a protected watershed. According to the May 27, 2018 Eagle Tribune, upstream from our water intake in Andover, here are the 2017 raw sewage discharge by community. Manchester, New Hampshire, 227 million gallons, 15 outflows. Nashua, New Hampshire, 9 million gallons, 5 outflows. Lowell, 108 million gallons, 8 outflows. According to a 2015 study published in the journal in the journal Environmental Health Perspective, it was found that there were a significant increase in people visiting hospital emergency rooms with gastrointestinal illness following raw sewage discharge into the river in the Lowell, Andover, and Lawrence region. This is a public health issue as it is obvious from the study that folks were getting sick on treated water. With Andover, we will be drinking water that at times will be mixed with sewage. We will not have the issue with the MWRA. Less cost isn't always the best choice and the MWRA clearly is a safer and much cleaner water supply. Also Andover option is not a permanent solution and merely kicks the can down the road for future generations. Also in the event the board goes Go, I'm sorry, does go down the Andover path. I do not believe the current language regarding storage tie has any teeth whatsoever and needs to be tightened up. The language at Andover's election, <coughs> Andover will work cooperatively with North Reading to facilitate North Reading's connection through Andover's storage network to Greater Lawrence Sewer District Sewer Treatment Facility. All costs for such application and implementation shall be the subject of a separate agreement between Andover and North Reading is not significant to protect our interests. Given the length of the time that it took to get us this far, do we really think Andover will cooperate with us on storage once they have a, us signed up for a 99 year water? Question mark. For those reasons and many others, I strongly believe MWRA to be a safer and permanent water option. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Andrew Schutz. Schultz. So, I don't know, Mark, if you want to respond to any of that, but that's his concerns. He's really basing it around the, the water quality and the water safety. Uh, is, I don't think he has any issue with the capacity. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll say I have not read the Eagle Tribune article. I will make a point to do that. I will just say on the, the water quality issue, the treatment plants on the Merrimack River are all required to have those multiple barriers of protection. Um, and that is something, because of the high quality of the Quabbin Reservoir, they don't have that same level of treatment protection in between the source and the consumer. So yes, the Merrimack River does tend to have, uh, obviously, higher water quality uh, fluctuation than the Quabbin Reservoir does. Um, but the, the treatment plant, and especially the Andover treatment plant, based on what we discussed earlier, does provide that level of protection. I have not seen anything um, relative to relating gastrointestinal visits to the hospital emergency rooms to drinking water. Um, Safe Drinking Water Act went into, a, it went into effect in the 1970s, which is when most of the treatment plants were constructed on, on surface water supplies. Um, they're designed specifically to <coughs> take that level of pathogen or that level of concern or contamination out of the drinking water and not expose the general public to it. So I guess I'd have to look at that, that study and the background of that study before I could comment on that because the, the, the entire intent of the Safe Drinking Water Act is not to say 
that the Quabbin water is safe, but the residents of Andover and subsequently North Reading are exposed to a, a lower quality of water. It's here's the standard all water suppliers have to meet, and it can be done through a combination of protection of the watershed and the Quabbin. I will agree, it has a very well protected watershed, or in the cases of these people that are drawn from rivers running through old cities, it's a combination of uh, levels of treatment that are provided in order to guarantee that the water at all times should be meeting those federal standards. So, so you know we're meeting on the 4th, and I know you've been busy. I know you guys have put a tremendous amount of hours into this. But if it is at all possible to have at least a response to Mr. Schultz's concerns, because I think they're valid. I mean, they are published, but there's no real facts backing them up. If you notice, there really isn't, the study doesn't exist. I went and looked for it today. Uh, you know, it's referenced, but there's nothing out there. So I guess it's a common term. It's fake news at this point. But if you could do a little research between now and when so we So I, I would just ask if you could forward me his comments there so that I can speci we can I specifically will. look at those. Uh, I'm going to ask him to send it to you okay, directly. So you. just the way he they came directly from him. Yeah, we'll, look, okay. we'll, 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 we'll do our best to insert Monday. Mrs. Manupelli. Yeah, and I, I also think, I don't think that was his only concern. I think it's been pretty verbally the sewage aspect of it as well. There really isn't much in this, and I understand it's just about the water supply, but I was expecting to see a little bit more of a firmed up commitment and and I know that's a long term thing that's not going to happen overnight or in the next year or in the next five years but something by way of some sort of a schedule it's it's taken five years just to get a continued path with them for water and we already are their customer so to kind of not have anything that's a little bit disappointing it's actually a big disappointment to me that there's not anything more firm of a commitment or some sort of a schedule put together on that <coughs> too, but I, I guess from the negotiating team's standpoint, I mean, the the intent going in was to get a commitment to work collectively on the sewer going down the road, and that was kind of the the entire charge we yeah. worked towards. Uh, not having any additional details on sewer in North Reading and where we plan to go and when we plan to do it, it, it was hard to work more than that into this type of and one of the other things that we did factor into this though was that the um, in order th for them to be considered a sole uh, provider for us they had to provide three million gallons per day that three million million gallons per day is predicated on the fact that the only way we're going to be able to justify that is if we have sewerage mm -hmm. so there is a tie to it but again we were looking to negotiate a, an agreement for portable water you know with the MWRA we're going to get the water we need and a mile and a quarter sewered and North Reading and nothing else. You know, so there was nothing else to discuss with the MWRA. But the Andover, the opportunity is far greater. Um, they certainly put that carrot out there because when they approached us over about a year ago, we said, you know, you've got to put a carrot here to get our attention, and that was one that got our attention. And they were very serious about it. Um, you know, they also were serious about the fact that, you know, whatever needs to be done, we're going to have to bear the cost because to them it really, there's no benefit to Andover for providing us sewerage from a dollars and cents point if you look at that by itself. It's just a small wheeling charge to take the effluent up to the Greater Lawrence Sewer District. But where the benefit comes is their ability to sell us more water. Yeah. That's it's in the, the water, there's money, you know, and it is to their benefit to work with us to get the sewerage done. And that's why the bogey that we set at the three million gallon in order to become the sole provider up to that level is predicated upon them working with us. So it was in the equation, uh, but it wasn't specifically addressed per se. Because we know it's gonna take a, a little bit of time obviously to work on some agreements, what's gonna have to be done, we have to be admitted, and we have to petition and all the rest that goes with it. But in our FTEIR and FEIR, we have to address wastewater also. And we have addressed it and the route that we've taken, even with the MWRA, is Great Alarms. That's our solution, not MWRA. Right. The solution in our FEIR, even if we go MWRA, is Great Alarms Sewer. So this facilitates it, this agreement and this uh, relationship and partnership facilitates the ability to bring sewage sooner and, again, uh, working with a willing partner to get us there. So. Um, 
to tie it in here would just further confuse the issue and get us into negotiations that we weren't, we're, we're still not, we're not in a position to even talk about when and if it's going to happen. So uh, I think we've addressed it well in relation to potable water and incorporating a reference to their willingness to work with us and tying the uh, maximum gallons that they have to provide to us to our future projections as to what those needs would be when sewage occurs. And just to add to uh, these comments, we visited Great Alarm Sewer. They're currently around 50% of full capacity, and they're looking for uh, additional flow. Yeah. So you know, I think we have a lot of incentive. And when we did the sewer study back a long time ago, before Michael and you and Andrew, uh, and it wasn't, it was Weston Sampson. Right? I was here. What? He I was, was here when we were did you it. Yeah. Toward the end, I guess. The yeah. beginning of his From the beginning. Tenure. Beginning of his tenure. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, basically, we looked at all the opportunities for sewer, and we came up, there was only one real viable source of sewer. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, actually. It was only about five years ago. Believe it or not, that we finished that study. It wasn't that long ago. But Greater Lawrence Store District clearly is the best path for the future of the town. I mean, you have to agree that if we don't go with Greater Lawrence Store District for storage, then there really is no need to expand past three million gallons because we just can't well, get the, there. The, the other fact remains is that you know the, this board made a conscious decision just a short time ago. You know, if we were going to you know go with MWRA and just do the mile and a quarter on Concord Street, and delay an opportunity with Greater Lawrence by not going with Andover. Uh, again, th th their appetite to assist us obviously diminishes with if we're not their customer for water. Uh, not to say that they've slammed the door on it because they didn't, uh, but th the excitement level is much lower. Yeah, but what we also did is, if we were talking about doing some package treatment plants around our own community, we sold the single single largest parcel of land for disposal mm. to Pulte. So we have further constricted our ability to meet our demands for sewerage in any capacity within the confines of our own community significantly by that sale. Yep. You know, but we knew that going in. We knew that going in, and we were willing to, to take that, uh, that chance. Uh, but I think this opportunity, to say that it hasn't been addressed enough in this, this agreement is, first of all, unrealistic based upon where we are in our timeline. And, and unfair because I think it's, it's contemplated and there's a serious uh, interest on the other party's part mm. and a serious interest, financial interest, to see it come to fruition. So, and I think yeah. we, we recognize that yeah. uh, with the gallonage that we put in there. I, I think it's important that we respond to the piece related to the quality of water yeah. and any issues associated with the storage getting into the water system. I think that's a fair question. We should look into it. But I agree that when, when you look at storage and going through Greater Lawrence Sewer District, it has been addressed, and I agree. I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's a massive motivation for Andover to help us get into Greater Lawrence Sewer District so we can increase our commercial base to bring in bigger users to sell, so they can sell more water. It's a big incentive. It's their future line. I mean, their lifeline for their water rates to continue to stabilize or maybe even go down. If we can continue, if they can continue to sell more water to uh, North Reading, so this is great. I appreciate the time. I know it's a last-minute meeting, but a lot of value came from it. And I look forward to hopefully all parties being prepared to make the decision on the fourth. So I don't think this, there's nothing else. We should at least take the action, change our deadline from May 30th to June 4th, and I think we have to do it in the form of a motion. Yes, Mr. Messier. Well, here and in public, I, I just like to uh, thank the efforts of Mark Clark and Rob uh, and our attorney in the in the final in the final hours uh, to make this thing happen. Uh, there's been a lot of hard work, and uh, and a lot of that work has been helping Andover get <laughs> their uh, legislation. Passed at their town meeting, the, the 99 year legislation passed at town meeting. 
and you know, with Steve and Michael, you know, on this negotiating team, uh, a lot of work is put in, and I'm not trying to brag for myself, but I think these guys have really put in the effort, and uh, I want to thank them. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Ditto. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Bow down to you guys. Tell you. <laughs> the hours have been. The, the, the hours, the, uh, the thought processes, uh, the, uh, their calm demeanor <laughs> assisted me greatly uh, in the negotiations. So it's, uh, it, it really is. Uh, that helps. It, it helps significantly. And, and again, it was a good team that we had put together and it, it worked can out we, very well. Can we, can we have a vacation now? No. <laughs> yeah. my own, After my own August. <laughs> I'm just going to add my own personal observation of Mr. O'Leary. Uh, he has to have some vampire blood into him because the later the negotiations get into the night, the more, the more he awake going. he becomes. <laughs> Everyone else is ready to drop. <laughs> <and> stay <laughs> on the floor. Let's keep going. That's very true. Yeah. Uh, but, Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's important for us, uh, for the negotiating team at this point, uh, you know, is there anything, and it's more to, to Kate and yourself, because Bob and I have been involved with it, uh, is there anything substantive that we need to bring back to Andover tomorrow? I mean, if not, we could use the day off, but, but if there is, you know, we'll bring it back. You know, is there anything substantive? And that's what they're going to be asking their Honestly, board tonight. I, I don't think, oh, sorry, you I, I just, again, and I, the whole, my whole, idea moving forward has been moving on to MWRA, moving away from them and on to MWRA. That was how I looked at this. What steered me back to this was the sewer component. Understanding and not attempting to be unfair or to belittle anything that's done because it was a tall order clearly for the team to bring it this far, and I thank the team because this was endless, endless hours and efforts and time and back and forth, and this is something that people didn't didn't know. Even we don't know all the efforts and phone calls and late nights and things like that. Lost time doing this, so it's not an attempt to belittle it. But the thing that I that shifted me back was that potential. And I do find this language non-committal, and I do find that there's no real impetus for them to do anything about it once this is a signed deal. It just says, okay, we'll cooperate with you, but we've seen that really doesn't mean anything, and it took years, literally, to get to this point with them. So I, that, that's something that, again, the, the whole reason I shifted a focus back to it and I, do, I always felt it would be backwards not to move on to MWRA, but the whole reason I shifted back to it was that component could really change large portions of this town in a very positive way, and I don't really see anything beyond just a sort of passing reference to, well, we'll work cooperatively with you. Would, do you. Do you have any um, suggested you know, language, a sentence or two that would strengthen it that we could bring back. I mean, that, that's I, mean, a that tough doesn't one. I have about a three, four, five paragraphs, but. but I mean, again, I mean, what, 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 is, what is the crux of it? What, is it? what type of a commitment are we looking for from them? Again, to me, you know, if, if we're going to go MWI, we're going to go yeah. Greater Lawrence Sewer District and invest in infrastructure. I'm not expecting Andover to make the capital improvements necessary to do it at their cost because it doesn't make any sense to them. Economically, it makes no sense. You know, they're going to get a small wheeling charge. And again, I think what we were talking down here, I don't even know what we're talking about, a wheeling charge in, in Reading. Yeah. But, but they it's small, you know, they two percent, two and a half percent, whatever it is. And, and I think in other communities, it might be up to four percent of a wheeling charge. Um, and that just covers the cost for when the thing breaks down, they have to fix it. They're responsible for making sure that it still goes. But, you know, any pipe that needs to be laid, any you know, new structure that needs to be built to be on our dime anyway. I'm anticipating that. Right, and that's into the millions for us to be able Right, to do but that. that's down the road that we're going to be talking about. Um, what brings order. them to the table, I guess, in this? Nothing, really. Nothing what? brings them to the table to be talking about it down the road. Yeah, no, our economic development, future economic development, is an incentive for them to sell us more water. 
They want to see us grow. They want us to become a bigger customer, right. which was exactly what their pitch was almost a year ago um, to us. You know, and we'll get you into. We'll we'll assist you. They have a seat on the board at the Greater Lawrence Sewer District. We will assist you in getting there. We'll get you to the table. They brought us to the table. We met with them, um, and they were positive and speaking with the executive direct director up there to, you know, what's the potential? What needs to be done? Is it possible? They headed us in the right direction. They were with us, and I wasn't able to make the meeting, but the chairman was uh, at the regional DEP office to talk about it, and it's feasible, and they're interested. You know, so what can we do? And again, I'd like to see us, you know, unanimous on this if we could be, but we may not be able to be, and, and that's okay too. And you know, as we've been saying all along to Andover, you know, our side here has been a very fragile situation as to which way is it going to go. Um, you know, we were pretty tired of our relationship with them, and you know, we've gone to marriage counseling now, and it's gotten a little bit better. But you know, and, and where we're, we're, where we are today, which is good, yeah. you know. Yeah. But oh, yeah. you know, if we can see, if you know, the only hurdle you have, you know, first of all, you know, if this is okay, other than some strengthening of language in relation to getting to Greater Lawrence Sewer. What is it that we need? Recognizing the reality of the situation, where you know it's all on us. You know, it's it's the impact on them is you know a couple of the streets might be torn up for a little while because they have to enlarge the pipes and they have to build Which a bigger one? they build a, a bigger uh, uh, processing plant. And, but, and that may benefit them as but, a community. And my guess is you know they may have some infrastructure that needs to be done at the same time anyway. They can address it. You know, so is this something? That you would suggest we bring it again, not knowing whether they would accept it or not. Mm. You know, and I don't know if they're going to have an issue tonight that they want to talk to us about. I would be surprised if they didn't. But um, allowing Greg, if you haven't been called a marriage counselor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> allowing Mrs. Minupelli to give some thought to your question, I'd just like to state that um, I'm good where we are. I'm I'm not looking for any more than what we have on the table. I think it's a very fair deal for both parties where we're at. I know there was a tremendous amount of going back and forth, and there was a lot of frustrations and blood, sweat, and tears in this case. Um, but I think we ended up where we needed to be, and for the good of both communities, this is a very good deal for both communities. And I'm not asking, I don't want to see any more change. And I think the incentive to get us into the Greater Lawrence Sword District is on us now. And Andover has got to be very motivated to help us do that because it's only future revenue for them in their water sales. So um, I think we have some money available to us to make investments to do it. I think the, for the first time since I've been on this board that we really have a path to get there. And I Excuse think me, this agreement. For the first time I've been on this board. So, that, which is. I think we have a more real, just, realistic path. It's, to, that's a very you know, significant statement. So. Let's take the um, opportunity to get this finished. Let's get it over the goal line. Thank Andover as much as frustrated as you guys have been. I know they have been frustrated. And I'm glad Comma Heads prevailed. And I'm glad we're at the point where we are. Uh, let's get this thing done on June 4th. And uh, let's work together as two communities. But go on. And also the, the, the terms, I think, that were negotiated in terms of the financial aspect, that's also obviously clearly hard to turn away from too. So that's excellent. What was what you you were able to achieve through through the negotiations in terms of those rate terms as well. So that that's a that's another huge thing that's very hard to look away from. In Mr. Schultz's concerns are they're valid. Of course. No, they're, yeah. they're, they're valid. valid. I'm, 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 so let's get him an answer yeah. to get him a yes. Uh, we, I think we should work hard to achieve a unanimous support on this. And if Mr. Schultz's concerns is addressed around the water quality, let's try to do everything we can between now and the 4th to get him what he needs. Um, and we may not get him, but we, we owe it to him because they're valid concerns. So if there's nothing else. So I don't know, so Mr. May, I, I don't know I if you want to like, offer something yeah, or not. I, mean, I, I just feel like maybe th it would have stronger terms like it that Andover acknowledges it's our intent to, um, it, it is our intent, you know, in the, in the near future to connect to 
you know, connect through, potentially through Andover Sewer to Greater Lawrence and, you know, obviously that requires a, a lot of studies, permits, appropriations and things like that, but maybe something like that, that they acknowledge we're on that path and they're coming on that path and they're going to do that with us when we're ready to move on, not, you know, we're ready and then it takes them five years to jump on board, like this thing took, you know. I don't know, something of, of that nature that maybe firms up their commitment in this agreement, albeit for potable water, that they're acknowledging we're doing this and you're helping us do it and we're doing it as soon as practicable for us. I'm, I'm happy to see that Mr. Corbo has his pen in hand. <laughs> no, that's a, no, that's he's a he's tough a given all of the contingencies clearly, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's it's really not committal. <laughs> No, every time I see him pick up his pen. Because we don't want to <laughs> open up the door yeah. and go back yeah. and forth. I know. I know. We just about I, I don't think there's anything wrong with bringing back a message to them. Uh, no, I, I agree with you, Michael. I'm just saying we have to be careful how we approach it. It is significant yeah. in yeah. that, yeah. you know, to get to get the stronger commitment on Andover's part to help us, to guide us down that path, to really help us find a solution, a permanent solution for our storage challenges. I get your motivation, but I still think that motivation is always backed by um, profits in this case. I know it's a bad term, but you know, the money, the revenue is very important to them. So their incentive is massive. I just think alone, uh, you know, if we want to sweeten the pot for them to make them more incentive, then, you know, then you come up with language to sweeten the pot to make them more motivated. That's what you do. But I don't think I don't, we need to. I don't, I don't think know if we are ready to do that. Though. No, no, and I, and I don't think there's a need. I don't think so. You know, they know, you know, that you know, their offer to assist us in getting into the Greater Lawrence Sewer District was a huge impetus for us to Stick with take them. a year off <laughs> and take a look at it. You know, uh, without that, I don't know where we'd be. You know, to me. That was a huge uh, step in the right direction for us, knowing that they were taking a very positive look at and recognizing that that's what we need here for economic development and growth. And in turn, they're going to benefit by it too. It's a win-win. You know, and they've been saying that all along. All right. They, they, they truly have. I mean, Mr. Gilbert. To go back to the comments regarding the negotiating team, if I could just have a moment to thank the three folks at the table in the front there. So just uh, I want to thank Rob. I know uh, you travel far to join us for uh, a lot of these meetings, uh, morning, noon, and night, and very late night. So thank you for your time and being always flexible and available and when you weren't making your technical team available to us. Um, Greg, uh, similarly, I know you spent a lot of time traveling back and forth over the past few weeks, and thank you for your, your time, your patience, and your flexibility in the arranging your workload to, to get this, to make this document at least possible for us to consider this evening. Wife. And to your wife, and uh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary as well, this, this evening, right? Oh, 19th no. wedding oh, anniversary. My, being I, spent I, I corrected you twice in one night, but <laughs> it was morning, noon, and morning. <laughs> yeah, that's correct, it was, yes. Yeah. And uh, finally, to, to Mark, who, who brings not only the understanding of the history, uh, but quite a bit of time put into it over the past month. And uh, lest we all forget, he's also serving as the acting DPW director, managing the department as well. Um, a department with a large budget and a large number of personnel. So I just want to thank you for your efforts to keep this as a priority and the long hours that I know you have put in. Thank uh, the, you. the other important piece of that was, you know, during the time period where uh, from the two town meetings at Andover, uh, well, participated in their public informational sessions and hearings and it was helpful for members of the board to be there. The comments that I've been getting back you know, from residents of Andover and public officials is, you know, here's the steady guy, answers the question, knows the background, credibility is huge, and, uh, and I think that helped put Andover over the finish line in order to get where we are today. And Mark, it's really to your credit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good thing Andover's in between here and Haverhill, but <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to Hanover. <laughs> Wherever you, are up, wherever you are up, wherever you are up in it. Do we have a motion to change Okay, I just want to know, are we bringing anything back uh, to, to Andover tomorrow? And again, we can meet with them and, and convey 
uh, or if we have some language that you want to offer, and again, not that they're going to be accepting of it, but I think it's important if we're going to put forth, put it forth. You know, but uh, truly, Kate, you know, we'd like your vote. You know, oh yeah, you no, know, we, we we'd like your vote. Course, you know, yeah. we we like yeah. to, you know tonight to, to to convey that there's a consensus here. You know, that we're three or four to one, or three or to two, or whatever it's going to be, uh, and we're going to continue to work yeah, and, and to try and allay Mr. Mr. Schultz's concerns to the extent where he can support this. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can't, you can't. If it's, if it's not, I, no, I I feel that if 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 we can bring sewer in, that. There's really no question. If we can't through MWRA and we can't through Andover, to me, that tips the scale for me. That that does. And it again, I was always in favor of go forward with MWRA, but hearing that really isn't going to happen. We all were. By the way, right, we all were. Right. Let's go. Let's yes. move it on. You yeah. know, I am concerned about quality. But I feel like our experts have reviewed the systems to be able to give us, you know, not just sort of one, two, three steps, but six steps of quality assurance. And then our own system, where we have our own quality assurance measures in. And it, this, again, this is, that's the component that I see is what is dragging me back to indoor, you know, because I agree with you. I, we, I would have said, see you later. The marriage is over and we're ready to move on, you know, so to the next partner. But um, but I think I, I, the quality issue, I think, is of concern because of how many, I guess, outfalls go into the Merrimack River. But if we're protected by what they have in place and what we have in place and our own experts are saying it's okay, then it's okay. And then this is my other chunk of it that I really wanted to have sort of something with you know, some firmness to it that they know what's happening, we know what's happening, when we're fiscally able to move forward, they're coming with us. You know, something like that. I don't even know, maybe our attorney can make the, make the modification if there is one to be made, you know. Any suggestions based upon your... Yeah, it's hard on putting you on the spot too. Yeah, and if you don't have one now, you don't have one now. But, um, I, I don't have one now. Um, it's just, it's, it's. So, oh, you doodling? I was wondering what you had your pen. I, I, was, ta I was taking some notes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. It, it's. I guess the challenge would be that you know we're we're dealing with a a future circumstance that has a a lot of um, you know details of, of its own that would have to be worked out before they could come. To fruition, and so the, the thinking here in this agreement was that, you know, they would make an agreement, and I do think there is a commitment here that they are going to, you know, cooperate in North Reading's efforts to to get sewer, um, you know, through the town and to and to make that connection. But you know, beyond you know, sort of agreeing to cooperate, I. I don't know that we could lock them into anything more um, in terms of a financial um, commitment for which they don't have an appropriation, um, you know, without sort of having a whole nother agreement that takes on a life of its own. And so, you know, the, the thinking was that, you know, we would put in this agreement an acknowledgement that this is that some, something is going to happen and they're going to agree in good faith to work with us to make it happen. And, and as others have said, there is a financial incentive on their part to provide that cooperation. And, um, you know, it, it really is, I think, you know, ultimately going to be, you know, North Reading's initiative to make that happen. And, and I don't know how much there is that we even really need from them to make it happen other than that cooperation. Great. You have a motivated Seller, which is the GLSD, they want us in the system. We want to get in the system. We really have the balls in our court. We need to make the commitment how we're going to finance it, how we're going to manage it. And you know, the, they'll be there obviously to help us along the way, but there really isn't a lot they need to do. It's really a, it's in our court. We need to get the DP. We need to learn the challenges that we have associated with permitting such a project like that. 
and then we got to do a huge education process all, all along our business community in some of the residential communities that are going to be impacted to educate them on why this is important for the community and how we're going to fund it and how it's going to be paid for. So we got a lot of work to do. I understand that, but knowing how Andover operates, if this is coming in 20 years from now, we need to start yesterday with Andover and whatever we need to make happen, clearly. And I would agree with you. This IMA is based off two prior IMAs that we had, and the amount of effort that went into getting this into a form that we presented you, to you tonight was huge. I, we have existing piping between the two systems. We have a billing system. We have a metering system. Should have been going into it naively thinking it should have been a fairly simple process. Sewer is always more difficult than water. So, and just from, so not my acting status, but my actual title as water superintendent, we do have a need that we have to address. So we're, our, our own wells are, you know, slowly losing capacity. We were looking to transition to MWRA by not too long in the future. Um, we have a very real need existing right now on our water system side. Okay. The future is, uh, the sewer is, it is a future for North Reading, and it's something that I agree, we need to start working towards it right now. But this needed to address the, the, the yeah. current. We can't live without water. Right. Okay, Mr. Masseri? You know, I think that getting this agreement signed and, and going forward, I think, is going to be a big step forward in improving the trust between the two communities. And I think that's really needed to get the sewer thing going, too. I think that'll be a benefit. You know, we're victims of the attitudes of some selectmen yeah, in the past true, yeah. uh, in Andover and, you know, what they threw at us to get things into this mess that we've been in and trying to untangle. And I think we have a perfect opportunity to just get the thing signed, move ahead, and then immediately start to put our plans together for what we need to do for sewer and what are the challenges and you know, do the enough engineering work so we have some idea of how we go about it. And obviously we gotta look at the issues associated with the DEP and everything else and uh, start to work with them. And I, you know, I think that in the process of us providing, uh, them providing a capacity, they're going to probably have to make some improvements. We're going to end up paying for them. They're going to be a benefit for some of that too. <coughs> I, I think we can make it work. So what do we so what do we tell them, uh, Kate? What do we, what do we want to we can convey Chair. the message, or, or do we are we looking to to put something in writing and, and alter what we have for an agreement, Mr. Gilberto? So I'll cut off the press. My understanding from the town manager in Andover is that Andover's review did not require further discussion, just for our board to be aware. They seem that it would appear that they're agreeable to the terms that were discussed this evening. Wow. Well. And I think we're Generally there too. I don't need anybody else's help to, to look bad, but you know. Okay. <laughs> I think we're there. I, I, I'm in agreement with Andover. I think what was presented to us tonight is is fully ready, and um, and I respect your views in regards to the storage, but I think we have the teeth and the what we need to move forward on it. It sits here on this board. We have. The power to do that, not end over. It's here, so let's get this behind us, so we can put some attention onto it, Mr. Gilberta. The town manager confirms that the board is agreeable. Okay. When are they signing, Michael? Has he said? Uh, I'll try to determine. You want us to sign first? So. Well, oh, that's great. Have, <laughs> Mr. Mr. O'Leary is looking if you have a desire to make a modification. Uh, no, I mean, I, no, I, I, I especially what, <laughs> no, 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 but we're, no, we're all in agreement, yeah. you know, and I think we brought yeah. this as far as we could, yeah, in order no, to, I, first of all, yeah. in order to, it, to even put it in this agreement is an acknowledgement on their part, mm. it has nothing to do with water, right, and, and we were insisted upon that, and it became one of the terms and conditions, the summary terms and conditions right. for us to go forward. Right. So they understand yeah. that. You yeah. know, that's why it's in here. Mm -hmm. So we have a strategic planning meeting coming up in the near future. And I think if we can get this behind us yeah. and locked in, 
I think we can really focus our attention on our strategic planning session about wastewater and about what we do with the uh, capital investment money that we have and how we want to focus on the future of that. And I think there is where we can really put, start putting our, our cleats into the grass and, and finding a way forward. So. Mm -hmm. So okay, it, apparently it's going to be Monday. They're, they're looking. To, they're looking for us to. Well, they're looking to meet on Monday to sign the agreement. And so, the motion I have prepared is to uh, to extend uh, the period of time for North Reading's co um, consideration of a long-term permanent agreement to June fourth. Mm -hmm. Again, they're going to be meeting at four o'clock. We'll be meeting before town 5 meeting. Five thirty. Uh, they will have already taken the action. Uh, we could take appropriate action at the same time. Again, we'd also like to be able to convey to them that it appears as though we're at what if three we, or four. To, so. What if we met at five instead? I, I hate to have everyone get there early, but what if we did our meeting at five and then had them come up and meet us um, at 5.15 to sign it together? You know, I can do that, but uh, up to the point. I just want to make sure that you know we are, truly are <laughs> all set. Um, we can't spend a ton of time on it, but yeah. we get it all signed on Monday. Um, Mr. Gilberto, would you be uncomfortable with that situation? I mean, I, I'm not uncomfortable with it. Uh, I think it's more the, the logistics of getting them to our high school facility. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, there'll be a competing event going I on yeah. in right. the building. So access to the facility is, is a challenge at that time. And Maureen might have a challenge taking our picture because we're not as photogenic well, we, as some of these could, other people. We could essentially start it here. I know, but she's got, she's got the grand march, <laughs> and, and they're much more photogenic people than us. No, but if we start at 5, right? If we start at 5, realistically, here, and try to be wrapped up by 5.30 so we can get up there by six and give us an hour before town meeting so this is a topic for us to discuss tomorrow morning in our town meeting planning meeting but um, I would say to you that, it, that we want to arrive either early or late up at the facility based on the scheduled walkthrough taking place and that's been our experience in the past so if we wanted to try to conduct all of our pre-town meeting business here and then get there immediately prior to the town meeting that might be I see. I'm sorry but I think at five o'clock up there is it's going to yeah, work. Yeah, They'll get them in there yeah, and get them out of there before the chaos. Because when's this March usually? It's at 5.15. It starts at 5.15, if it's I remember. 5.15 to 6.15. Yeah. Never mind that. <laughs> I'm a moron. That's why I think you told us to be there ahead of that. I mean, we could you told us move. We could I move. Did the, you did, did because that's what I had. So, I mean, we could ask to move the meeting earlier up at that facility and create a yeah, window in fine. between, effectively. That's another that's option. This is my full-time job, and <laughs> I know it's just so. Uh, Four thirty. I mean, we've got to talk to Mr. Schultz, but I. Uh, oh, you said you asked. You so, said if we have a meeting at four thirty, will we have it at the high school or here? The high school. High school. They're meeting at four in their yes. location. Steve, do we actually have to get together to sign it together? No, 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 no. No, no. no this doesn't call for any of that. I mean, do we, nice we, we, we do we, some sort of ceremonial thing to... Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And we'll it won't be at the town line up at the Lily Field. After right? the legislation. Oh, okay. So what do they want from us, and do they want us nope. to sign it? I think they want to know what we're doing. But, you know, the way that we've had it, had it timed, if, if we were agreeable to moving our consideration to June 4th, they were going to meet at 4 o'clock so that they could convey to us that they've signed it. Mm -hmm. All right? So that we would know yeah. that, it was, that it was done. Um, well, I don't think we have an issue with them. But, you know, obviously we want them to sign it, right? But it, I think it's just a matter of getting those final answers, water quality right. and things like that. Okay. Then to, to be honest with you, right? So Why don't we plan then a meeting at 5? Mr. Schultz can do that. He just texted me and said he can, he's free anytime after 3. But if we stick to 5... We'll know by the time we arrive. You'll know. They signed it. We do that first action completed. Send it to them what we need to do, and then we'll just get our town business done between 5, 15, 5, 30. We do want to give a few minutes for uh, Mark to give some answers to the questions related yeah. to what mm -hmm. we could learn regarding the uh, storage issue. Um, and we 
should be good, 15 minutes. That gives us plenty of time. And we get there before the rush. I think that's the most, the best part of the, the scenario you just described, getting there before that. So our meeting would start at 5. This would be the first topic on the agenda. We would not be having Andover come to the meeting here. It's not necessary at this time. But if Mr. O'Leary needs to take a minute to call him or yeah. whatever. No, no, uh, okay. No, but we'll, we'll, but we'll know at that point and then we'll inform We can recess the meeting for five, ten minutes. You yeah. know, and, and again, uh, you know, for our part, you know, if there's three of us that are in agreement, that's a majority. I certainly would like to see something of this magnitude have, you know, more than a simple majority support. Um, if we can't get the full five, that's um, fine. It I appears to me, based upon Schultz. what they were telling us, it's there's unanimity up there. <laughs> Mr. Schultz is going to work on you. Well, Are you kidding? No, no, that's fine. But, uh, but again, it, it, it's just, uh, this isn't arm twisting or anything else. This is, uh, you know, it's a big decision. Concerns. It's a big decision. I think it's yeah, uh, the right decision. And um, however it falls, it falls. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, with your permission, again, I, I move to extend the period of time, you know, for North Reading's consideration of a long-term permanent agreement to June 4th, 2018. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. O'Leary, second by Mr. Minucelli. Any discussion? Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman, for the record, we're voting this under item two on the agenda, which is relative to the wastewater update, vote to approve next steps. So we've taken the agenda items in reverse order by going through the IMA and then coming to this matter. More for the record. Okay. Okay, any other comments? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And one app, oh, unanimous one app. Four, zero, one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the late hour and the fact that we're looking at a longer meeting, I think, on the evening of June Town meeting, I, I'm going to suggest that we not vote any recommendations this evening, particularly because the finance director is not able to join us, but, but although she will be providing me the final updated information immediately prior to meeting. So we could pass over our article uh, item number four. And we have uh, one ri final remaining item of business, which is an appointment to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee of the School Committee's representative. And we have prepared <coughs> a motion. Uh, this Before action. We do that. We're just going to cut you home, cut this gentleman home. Yes, so gentlemen. Thank you. His spouse. Getting home early tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for the trust. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Happy anniversary. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. Good luck going home. Good, good luck going home. Please pass our apologies on to your spouse. All right. Thank you very much. We'll seeing you guys tomorrow. No, no, you can take tomorrow off. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can't think of any like Thank you, Greg. Uh, I mean, I could, but Michael. it would take another hour, and I don't the, want to do that. Uh, town meeting uh, on PowerPoint, you're going to put up there, or is it? Uh, probably Monday, uh, depending upon where we're at. Well, I know, probably Monday. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted something. Uh, if I knew a time, I would tell you. Um, I'm going to try for noon time. That's my goal. Um, if I can get it done sooner, I will. But that's the honest answer. Will you put it in? I will, yes, as soon as it's Mr. Yes. Chairman, just one thing to note for the members of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee who are here. So tomorrow we have a meeting scheduled, which I would suggest go forward. And I will report to the committee the recommendation that the board will be considering on Monday night for $3 million <coughs> to be appropriated for either portable water solution. That's the intention. Okay. Great. Thank you for attending. And again, Mr. Yeah, 4.30. Yes. So that was voted 4-0, Mr. Schultz being absent. And again, just once again, um, my colleagues here on the board, especially Mr. Masseri, uh, your tolerance <laughs> and understanding and willingness to, uh, to adapt um, is telling and I think uh, to the benefit of the community. So uh, congratulations to all and uh, thanks for sticking with us through this process. Thank Appreciate you. it. Stuck it out together, which is the most important. So. When Thank we left again. that first town meeting, when all the amendments happened and in the hallway you said, we said, I guess we're done. And you said, I don't think I so. I said, no, I said, look at the bright side. They voted for a 99 year deal, so. just a little monkey wrench <laughs> thrown into it. So do we have a- um, Good on you. <laughs> we have a capital Bob improvement committee Mike. member we need to make an appointment for. Correct. And then we can adjourn the meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint uh, Diana Bootwell to the uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee as a school committee representative for a term to expire May 4th, 2021. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
opposed? Unanimous. Four zero one. And I don't think we have anything else. Mr. Chairman, I vote to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody.